Welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a stunning website with WordPress. I'm sure that both complete beginners and more advanced users will find this video beneficial. My name is Victor and I'm the founder of Divimundo.com. I started designing and selling websites back in the 90s, but it wasn't until 2005 that I discovered WordPress and I understood that this is a real revolution. Suddenly everyone could build their own beautiful websites. In this tutorial I will show you how you can create your own website step by step. And we will be learning by doing, so we will create the case website for the fictitious company The Divi Crib. I will show you how to design it from scratch without using standard templates that your competitors already are using. You can follow along and download all the resources during this tutorial. We will use WordPress which is behind more than 40% of all websites and we'll use the world's most popular WordPress theme Divi which comes with an amazing visual page builder. But we'll start from scratch, so I will walk you through what you need and how you can work on a slim budget. We will register a domain and a web hosting account for your website. Then we will install WordPress and your theme. Then it's time for my favorite part, and that's creating stunning design and content. This is the demo website that we're going to create throughout this tutorial. And uh, we have a global header in top with some social media links and a call to action button to the right. We have our navigation with the site logo and we have our navigation bar with some sub links to our blog post category pages. If we scroll down, you can see that the menu or the header is sticky. And of course, everything is mobile optimized and fully responsive. So let's scroll down to take a look at the page design. We have this nice hero area with the divider shape in the bottom. We have these blurbs with a nice hover effect. A classic image to the left, text to the right area. Our testimonial slider that will slide on forever and ever. We list the three latest news posts on our website in this blog grid. We have a classic call to action area with a subtle background image with an icon, text and a call to action button. We'll also brag with our client logos and add a nice hover effect as well. And we have the bottom with a full width image and our global footer. And we will add a dynamic current year to this footer so that will be automatically updated each year and we will use the Divi Builder for that. Okay, so we'll click this one to get back to the top and we will go on to the About Us page. So this is where we describe the fictitious company, the Divi Crib. We have the hero area and then we have nice counter modules animated and we'll describe the history of the company in two columns. Then we have a big area with some blurbs uh, listing our products and services on a subtle background. And then we have the most important resources for the company and that's the employees. So I put some extra effort into making them beautiful with some hover effects like this. And then we recycle the logos from our favorite clients. Let's head on to the news page or the blog page. So if we scroll down, we can see a sidebar to the right with some post search, some links to our categories and some social media links. Then we have all the posts in date order. We have the featured image, the title, the publish date, the category. We have an excerpt and a read more button. And while we add it, we can actually click one of these posts to look at the post template that we are creating in the Divi theme builder. So here we can see the post category, the dynamic post title and the dynamic published date. Also the featured image will be displayed as a background here. And this will all be created in the Divi theme builder. We have the blog content and we have our sidebar. 
and then we show related content which also will be injected dynamically via the Divi theme builder. Okay, we also have some category pages and they will also be designed and created in the Divi theme builder. So here's the category page for inspiration and we have a category page for cases. And while we add it, we can also look at the page template for the search page results. So let's say that I search for sustain. I will find all the blog posts containing sustain in one or another form like this one, sustainability. So this is also a global template from the, from the Divi theme builder. And we have the contact us page. This one is an important page. So we will be build a beautiful minimalistic contact form with the Divi form module. And we also add this checkbox for the privacy policy, where we will link also to the privacy policy like this. And we will protect our form from spam with Google reCAPTCHA version 3. So I will guide you through that as well. We will have some contact information here and uh, below that we will display a frequently asked questions with toggles that you can expand like this. And below that we will embed a Google Maps map uh, and we will do that with a simple setup without having to use any Google API or anything like that. And we have one more template that I want to show you and that's the 404 page. So if I go to a URL that does not exist, we will have this nice 404 page. So that's the scope of this tutorial. So let's head into the first chapter. So what do you need in order to create a website? Well, First, you need a computer with a decent internet connection. Then you need a web browser, for example, Google Chrome. What infrastructure do you need for a website? Well, if you want your visitors to find it, you will need an address or a domain. There are different types of top domains like .com, .org or .net. Then you need a web hosting account. And this is where you store all the files for your website. Then you need a content management system to work with and we are going to use WordPress in this tutorial. WordPress will need a database where it will store all the information from your website. We will use one click install that will create the database and connect it to WordPress for us. On top of WordPress you will need a theme and this is where you set the look and feel like fonts and colors. And then you can add plugins and they are a bit like apps for your smartphone. So it's a way to add extra functionality to WordPress. So how much does it cost to create a website? The biggest investment you'll make is probably the time you spend designing it. So make sure that you choose user-friendly and efficient tools. But let's have a look at the fixed costs. Let's start with the web hosting. I recommend SiteGround, the industry leader since 2004. They are also recommended by WordPress. So with the affiliate link below, you can get 67% off their solid startup plan. So that's just $4.99 US dollars per month the first year. If you need a bigger plan, we will look into that too. Then we have the domain and the .com domain costs $15.95 Euros per year. And then we have WordPress and WordPress costs exactly nothing. This is open source software and you can use it however you want. Then you need a theme for WordPress and uh, through the affiliate link in the description below, you'll get 20% off the world's most popular theme Divi. So if you use the link divimundo.com slash Divi20, you will get the annual subscription for just 70 US dollars. And with this license, you can use Divi on how many websites you like. This is an unlimited account. So if we sum it up, it's 146 US dollars for a year 
or $12 for a month. And I think that's a pretty sweet deal for having your own website. The first step for us is to get a domain and a web hosting account. The domain is the address to your website. It could be a .com, .net, .org or .almost anything. A web host, that's the place where your website lives. This is where you install WordPress and this is where you store all your website content. I recommend SiteGround. They have been the industry leaders since 2004 and they host over 2 million domains. And as you can see, they are recommended by some major players like WordPress themselves. If you use my affiliate link divimundo.com slash SiteGround, you'll get up to 70% discount and I will get a small commission. So I guess that's a pretty good win-win. Okay, so let's have a look at the different accounts. And we can start with a small one called Startup. So we have a special price for 3.99 euros a month or 4.99 US dollars a month. So here you can store one website only. It's just one domain on this account. And you have some limitations regarding web space and visits. Otherwise you have free one-click install of WordPress. You have free SSL. Daily backups. This is really nice. If your website crashes or get hacked, you can restore it easily with one click. You have free CDN, you have email. So this, I would say, is a good account for a small player if you have a really small basic website with few visitors. If we look at the medium account, we have the best seller Grow Big. The special price here is 6.99 euros a month or 7.99 US dollars a month. Here we have unlimited websites, you can add as many domains as you want to. You have more web space and more visits. You also can add on-demand backup copies. So on top of the daily backups, you can log in and just click a button to get an extra backup. And this is really nice. You also have the ultra fast PHP, so you can increase your page speed. Staging is also a nice feature. This means that you can make a copy of your live website and make some changes in the staging environment that is not visible for your visitors. And when you see that everything works fine, you can apply the same changes to your live environment. You can also add more users to your web hosting account. The last one is their large account, the GoGeek, and we have a special price there, which is 13.99 euros a month or 14.99 US dollars a month. Here you have unlimited websites, just like in Grow Big, but you have twice the web space and we have 100,000 visits monthly. And uh, here we also have some extra technical stuff. If you don't know what this is, this is probably not the account for you. So this is maybe for someone with a big international website or a big heavy e-commerce store. I would say that Grow Big would be the account that fits most players. Since I'm building a demo website, the Divi Crib, which will have a low traffic, I will get the startup plan. In this step, we will choose a domain and there are different top domains. .com is the most popular, but we also have .eu, .net, .org and we have .nl, another popular one. The Dutch are active, I can see. We have more country specific domains and we also have some fun ones like .coffee and .club, but I'll go with the most common one, a .com. If I already have a domain registered in another place, I can simply just connect it to SiteGround by adding it here. But I want to re register a new domain and I'll type divicrib.com and I will proceed. Lucky me, the divicrib.com is available for registration. So now you just have to add your information, your email address, choose a password. Choose your country, city, street address, zip code and phone number and first name, last name. And if you have a company and a VAT or tax ID, you should enter that one too. Add your payment information. We should have a look at this last box. So here you could change your plan. If you have doubts, you can just click this icon to choose another plan. 
I'll stick with my startup. The data center is important. Uh, they suggest Europe because I'm in Sweden right now. So Cytron knows that. So it says Europe. So this is where the servers are located. And you want your service to be located as close to your visitors as possible. Because this will improve your page speed. I actually have most of my visitors from the USA. So I will show this one in Iowa. And uh, if you have a global visitor from all over the planet, you can later add a CDN free of charge at the site ground control panel. Okay, so then you can choose your period and I want the best deal, which is 12 months. So I go for that. And then the price is 399 euros a month. Then we have the extra services and uh, the domain registration is already done, dbcrib.com. But I can also tick the box for domain privacy and that's 1170 euros per year. And this is if I want to hide my personal data from people scanning the internet. So if I don't buy this extra service, I probably will get some more spam emails, but I have a good spam protection, so I don't mind. So I'll keep that one unticked. Then you have the SG site scanner, and that's a tool that lets you know if your site is down or if it's been hacked. There are pre plugins that will do the same work, so I will not tick that box either. So I'm happy as is. So I can see the total price here is 77.29 euros, including the VAT, or 61.83, excluding VAT. I will confirm that I agree to the terms of service, and I will click Pay Now. Okay, we are back and it actually just took a few minutes for the welcome emails to land in my inbox. I have my login information uh, and I also need to verify my domain name. So I'll click that link and I have to complete this verification or the domain below will be suspended. So this is important. So I verify that this is my name and this is my email. So I am the correct owner of divicrib.com and I verify this information. So the contact information is verified and we're all good to go. Let's go back to this siteground.com website and proceed to my customer area. And the eagle has landed. So you have passed the first part of this tutorial and maybe you see this notification that we need to verify our domain and uh, this was the thing that we just did. So uh, don't worry if you see this. It says here that if you have already completed the verification, please ignore this mes message. It will disappear automatically within 24 hours. So sometimes it takes a little bit of, of time for the verification to get registered. So this is it for uh, getting domain and web hosting. And the next step will be installing WordPress. So we got our domain and our web hosting account at SiteGround. If we take a look at our domain, divicrib.com, we can see that there's an awesome site in the making. And uh, you're absolutely right about that site ground. If we take a look at the demo website, this is what we are aiming for. So in able to achieve this, we have to install WordPress. And luckily, SiteGround offers a one click, super simple install for WordPress. So if we go back to our SiteGround account, we can click websites in the main menu. And uh, I only have one website on this account and uh, I can click the complete link. So if you already have a website in another web hosting account, you can migrate that website, but we are going to create a completely new website from scratch. So I click start new website and I can choose an application if I want to use just WordPress or if I want to use uh, WordPress and WooCommerce. And WooCommerce is the official e-commerce plugin for WordPress. Weebly site builder, I don't even know what that is, but um, we are going for WordPress. So I click select. 
So we start here by adding uh, our email address and this will also be our login username and uh, choose a secure password and click continue. And I don't want to add the Cycron site scanner, there is no need for that and I don't need to add the domain privacy so just click finish. And now Siteground is uh, creating the WordPress installation, setting up the database, installing WordPress and connecting it. So uh, it's doing all this for us so we don't have to do this technical work ourselves. So while waiting for this, feel free to um, hit the like button or leave a comment on this video. I would, would really appreciate that. And we are all set. Perfect. So the website with my domain, divicrib.com, has been created. I can point my domain to the new host servers, but since I have both my domain and my uh, web hosting account at Sitegrown, there's no need for that. That happens automatically in my account. And I can also go to Site Tools to manage the site. So if we click Manage Site, you will find a bunch of options for your website. For example, you can manage your email accounts. You can go to the file manager if you want to mess around with the PHP files in WordPress. Under security, you have the backups. And this is really good if you want to restore your website if something happened. And you have free daily backups in all SiteGround accounts. So I already have one backup since yesterday when I started recording this tutorial. We're going to look closer to the SSL manager and the HTTPS uh, enforce in order to make uh, a secure connection for our website. If we take a look at our website, divicrib.com, it now looks different. So it says my WordPress, just another WordPress site and nothing here. So this is actually a good thing. We can see that WordPress was successfully installed and we have the default theme, the 2021 theme from WordPress installed. And to log in to WordPress, you will type after your domain. So divicrib.com, for example, you type slash WP hyphen and admin so that's shortening for wordpress administrator and i hit enter and then i come to the login screen so this is where i enter my credentials so i enter my email address as my username and the password that i choose for and if you have forgotten your password, don't worry, you can just click lost your password and then you can get uh, an email with the restore password link and just choose a new password. So I click remember me so I don't have to type this in every time I'm going to log in. And we are in WordPress. And if you have used WordPress before, you might not recognize this screen because this is a customized SiteGround welcome screen. I will exit that, clicking exit link below and go to the default WordPress dashboard. And this is actually a complete installation of WordPress. So in the upcoming chapters, we're going to look closer to the different settings. We're going to install a theme, look at some plugins. And least but not last, we'll create a really, really nice custom website design. Before we do anything else, we're going to make sure that this website has a secure connection. And this is important both for you and your website security and it's important for your visitors so they can feel trust in your site and it's also important for google because they will rank you lower if you don't have a secure connection to your website so if you look here in the url section you can see that there's a padlock and if i click the padlock it says that connection is secure so that's a good thing but if i go to http colon slash slash divicrib.com I can see that it says actually not secure with a warning sign and if I click here it says your connection to this site is not secure and you should not enter any sensitive information etc etc so this is a warning and uh, we don't want this to happen 
So it's easy to fix this, especially if you use SiteGround as a web host. So if we go back to our site tools in the SiteGround dashboard, we have the security tab to the left and we have the SSL manager. And we should install an SSL certificate. And this is what makes the secure connection possible. And we will choose a certificate here. And uh, actually it comes by default. So it's already installed. And that's why it says secure here. So that's really nice. We don't have to worry about that. The other setting that we have to look to is HTTPS enforce. And that means that we force all connections to go to HTTPS colon slash slash instead of HTTP colon slash slash. So it's, it's a force redirect. I will activate this. And uh, I have to do one more setting because this was on the server side. And if I go to my WordPress website and I go to settings, I can see that this site has a WordPress address URL and a site address URL, and both of these start with HTTP. I'll just add an S, so it's HTTPS, and we do the same thing for the site address, and we hit save changes. And now I will be logged out, and that's perfectly fine, so I'll just log in again. And now if I go back to this not secure website, and I hit refresh, we can see that we have the nice looking padlock here and it says connection is secure. A WordPress website must have one active theme and it's in the theme where you can decide the look and feel like colors, fonts and other styling options. And to choose a theme and to manage it, we can go to Appearance in the left-hand menu and choose Themes. And WordPress comes with pre-installed themes. There's one default theme released every year from WordPress. So now we have 2021, that's the active theme. And this is last year's theme, the 2020. Those themes are more like showcase themes. So you have to choose one for yourself. And there are thousands and thousands of different themes out there. So there are lots of free themes. So if you click the add new button, uh, you can browse featured themes, the popular, the latest, and uh, some of them looks really good and modern. And uh, some of them looks like something maybe from the 90s. But I would not recommend you to use a free theme for several reasons. The first one is that there is no guarantee that they will be updated and supported. They might be phased out when you have invested hours and hours into your website and it's not secure and updated anymore. And then you have to change your theme and probably spend hours of recreating content. The other reason is that there might be no free support available. So if you need help with something or if you find bugs, you might have to hire a developer or pay someone to get support. And the last reason is that there is often limited functionality and features in the free themes. So you might have to upgrade to a pro version or, or buy premium plugins to get those features that you will need. So the free themes will not stay free for very long. So I would recommend you to purchase a premium theme and then you don't have to go through the hassle of rebuilding and changing themes and buying add-ons. And the theme that I recommend and use for all my websites since years ago, it's called Divi. So this is the world's most popular WordPress theme. We can actually look if that claim is true. So if we go to this independent builtwith.com website, we can actually see that Divi is the most popular on the entire internet in the WordPress theme category. And in Sweden, where I am right now, it's also the most popular theme. So we can see that there are um, over 2 million live websites built with Divi and it's growing really fast. Divi has been around since 2008, so this is not just a temporary thing. They have been around for a long time and it's a really solid theme. It has an excellent rating on Trustpilot. 5 out of 5, so that's the, the highest score you can get based on over 16,000 reviews. So how come Divi is so popular? Well, I think one reason is this. It's uh, a theme 
but it's also the ultimate WordPress page builder. It's not just a theme with, with the colors and fonts and stuff, but included is the page builder and we can take a look at it here. You can see that this is a what you see is what you get editor. So you can drag and drop. You can uh, basically just resize by dragging and everything is visual. So it's super user friendly and really, really efficient to work with. So you can do really creative, nice looking stuff and it goes very fast. So I really, really like this editor. And we have the default editor in WordPress called Gutenberg. And I would say that this is Gutenberg on steroids so much better. Some other perks of the Divi theme, except for the drag and drop building and the true visual editing is that you have custom CSS control. So if you like to code a bit like me, you can just add the code yourself. Responsive editing, it's really simple to make this website look awesome in, in mobile and tablets. And you have loads of design options using shadows and animations and uh, you name it. Inline text editing, just click on the page to edit the content, super easy and quick. You can save and manage your design, import and export and share between websites. You can use global styles and also undo, redo and revisions. So that's also a nice thing that you can save time with. Another fine thing is that there are over 40, I think it's 46 modules for like everything. We have like sliders, blog, galleries, forms, of course, images and texts. So you don't have to download a bunch of plugins, like a plugin for sliders and a plugin for contact forms, etc., making your site really bloated and slow. So all this is included in Divi and you use the visual builder to create it all. So it's super simple and intuitive. Another reason why I think Divi is so popular is that there are actually thousands of pre-made designs. I think it's 1,500 now. So this is an old number here. They need to update their website. So every week you get new layout packs where you can download ready-made designs for all kinds of businesses. And uh, then you can just use the visual builder to change the colors, the fonts, the images the content and move it around so it's not like those locked themes where everything everything is placed where it is and you can't change it so you have this really flexible layout packs that you can download for free and all those are included in your div account and you can use them for yourself or you can sell those to to your clients and uh, speaking about clients i think one of the really really big perks of divi is the pricing if you buy one license, you can create hundreds or thousands of websites and uh, for yourself and for your clients. So you just pay one time and then you can make how many websites you want. And speaking about price, I have an affiliate link that will give you a 20% discount when you sign up for Divi. And uh, if you use this link, I will receive a small commission. So it's like a win-win. And to access this 20% off discount, you will type the URL divimundo.com slash divi20. And here you can see that it's 20% off, one license, complete access, unlimited websites, unlimited users. So this is exactly the same um, content or, or the same features that you get if you sign up for DV the regular way, but now you have a 20% off discount. And you can see here that the yearly access was 89 US dollars per year, but now it's $70 per year. And then you will ha have access to DV. And also their other theme called Extra, which is made for magazine websites. And you will have access to the plugins Bloom and Monarch. You will have access to all the website layout packs. You will have access to all the product updates, premium support. So you can just chat with the support 24 seven here. You can use Divi on unlimited websites. And it's also a risk-free guarantee because you have a 30-day money-back guarantee with no questions asked. 
And you have the same thing here if you choose the lifetime access. This is the, the um, subscription that I have used and I did it a few years ago. So I have really gained from using this, uh, this subscription. So it's uh, instead of 249, it's 199. And uh, you have all the same features. The only difference is that this is a one time fee. So I would strongly recommend the lifetime access. But if you want to just try it out and see, the yearly access works fine. I will choose the lifetime access and sign up today. I can choose my username, say Divimundo. I add my email address. We have it there. I choose a password. Should probably have a longer one. First name, last name my country of residence and what happened here is that the VAT is added when you buy outside the US so it's my local uh, taxes if I choose let's see United States could it be Uganda there we have it uh, we're going back to 199 US dollars this depends on the tax rates in in your country of residence and then I just add my card number and I agree to the terms of service and uh, then I click complete registration. But as I said, I already have a lifetime uh, subscription since many years ago. So um, you can go on with the registration and I will meet you on the other side to show you what to do after you complete it. Congratulations. You are now a part of the awesome Divi community. So once you purchased your Divi license, you can go to elgenthemes.com slash members hyphen area to log into your member account. So I type my username and my password and I hit login. So I'm in the members area and it's here that I could download the Divi theme. So this is the theme that we are going to install on our website. So I hit the download button and it will download a zip file, divi.zip on my local drive. And I could also download the Divi Builder plugin. So this is if you use another theme like Astra or something else and you just want to use the Divi Builder. I never use this and uh, I don't think you will either. We're good by just downloading and installing the Divi theme. And just to show you, below you have another theme called Extra that you can uh, use instead of Divi if you are creating a magazine website. I would say that Divi works really nice today also to create a magazine website. You have Bloom where you can create like pop-ups and stuff for uh, email opt-ins for your newsletters. It's a good way to collect leads. And we also have Monarch, which, which is a nice social media share and follow plugin. So you can have social media icons on your website. So those are extra plugins that you can download and uh, install on your website if you want to. So we're going back to our website, uh, WordPress dashboard. Let's go back to the dashboard. So this is how it looks like when we log into WordPress. And to install Divi, we're going to appearance and themes and we click add new. And we choose upload theme. And now I can just drag and drop this divi.zip file and drop it on choose file and click install now. And you always get the latest version when you download the theme directly from the Elgin Themes member area. And I click activate since I want to use Divi as my active theme. Perfect, so we can see that some stuff happened here. We have Divi as my active theme. We also have a new menu item here called Divi with my different Divi settings. And we're going to walk through all of them soon. But first I can actually throw these themes away since they're just there taking space. So I click and click delete. And I do the same for 2020, bye bye, and 2021. So now I travel more lightly, I only have one theme installed. So we have purchased and installed our Divi theme. The next step is to 
continue with our settings. So we'll begin in the bottom in the Divi tab. And here we have theme options. We have the theme builder, the theme customizer, role editor, Divi library and support center. And we'll actually start by exploring the support center because this is a really nice feature in Divi. So first off, I can see the system status. And if I click show full report, we can see that our SiteGround hosting has green dots on all of them except for one and that's the display errors. And this is a technical setting that you will not need for your website and we do of course want all green dots here. So we'll begin by fixing this small issue. And to do that I will log in to my SiteGround account. So I go to SiteGround.com and I click login to the upper right. And uh, I type in my password. And I'm in my SiteGround account. So I will click websites in the top menu. And we have the Divi crib. So I'll go to site tools. And uh, there we have the left hand menu and I go down to the devs tab for development and we'll go to the PHP manager. So this might seem a bit technical, but don't worry, I will guide you through it. So down here we have the PHP version, which now happens to be 7.3.28, which is fine. And we'll go to the PHP variables tab. And it's in this long list that we will find the display errors setting. So there are a lot of settings here. So I will click this funnel and uh, I will type error and close it. And now we can see the display errors line here. And we can see that the value is on. And if we go back to the support center, we should set it to off, which is zero when you're talking code language. So we hit the pen to the right of the in the display errors row. And we say no instead of yes and confirm. Success. OK, so if we go back to the DV support center and we hit refresh, we can see congratulations all system checks have passed so if we look at the full report we can see that we have uh, all the requirements for a fast smooth and secure experience with divi so you can check back here every now and then just to see that you're up to speed if we browse down we have the elgin themes support and this is really nice it's in included in your divi account so you can chat with the support 24 7 and you can also grant the support remote access which is also really nice i cannot um, activate remote access right now because i have not entered my license key in the dv theme option settings so that's something that i have to do first and we will do that in the next step uh, otherwise, you also have some documentation here and some help. So that's also nice if you get stuck. And this feature is also a really good one. It's safe mode. So if you have lots of plugins on your website and maybe some custom code, you might experience conflicts at some time. And then you can enable safe mode. And that will uh, disable all plugins and all custom code, but just for you when you are logged in in WordPress, so you can browse your website and, and see how it looks like without the plugins uh, installed. Uh, but your external visitors will not see this. The website will work as normal for them. So this is a way to, to find where the conflicts might be in your website. So I will turn off safe mode for now. Uh, so this is basically uh, the Divi help and support center.
So let's have a look at the Divi theme options. You find them under the Divi tab and theme options. So there are a lot of options here, but don't worry, most of them, like 90%, is deprecated and not relevant anymore. So I will show you which ones you need to look at. So the first one is the color pickers default palette, and this is a really nice feature in Divi. This is where you set your global color palette and then you can just use these colors throughout the website with your visual builder. So if we have a look at the end result, the website, you can see that we have a theme color here. It's the gold. And then we have lots of different shades of gray that we are going to use. And then of course we have white and uh, some black. So if I go back to my theme options, I click the first color in my palette and I will paste the color code for uh, my gold color. And all these colors uh, are available in the description below. So if you want to follow and uh, paste these ones, just find them there in the description. Then we have the second color. It's a dark gray color for headers and it's 333. Three, 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 and then we have a slighter, lighter gray color for the body text, and that's six, 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 six. And uh, next one, number four, is a really light gray color that I will use for some text on a darker background. So it's E five, E five, E five, and uh, then we have a really dark gray, almost black. It's 1C, 1C, 1C. And you can see here that you could also drag here to find your desired color. And you can also use this toggle here. And this toggle to the right, you can uh, work with transparency. But we are only using full colors here. And uh, I already have the hex code, so I can just paste them here. Okay, and we will of course also add black color and that's zero 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 and if I just uh, enter the three first digits or characters the last three ones will be filled in automatically and the last one here will be white and that's FFF and I get the three last ones included there and uh, this one we're not going to use so I'll just save the purple one there so this is my theme colors that I will use throughout the website so if we scroll down, we can skip a lot of those settings here because they are not interesting at all. We could change the date format. So we have month, we have uh, day and we have year. And uh, you can change the order of this by using like maybe this format. This will be year like 2021. This will be month like 10. And this will be the day like 12, for example. And if you want to look at different date formats being used on the page, you can just click on the um, question mark and uh, you will find the WordPress code reference. Sorry, that was the wrong link. Here we go. Uh, and you will find all the different formats for how you want to display your dates on the website. So I'll go with that. And um, scroll down here. Uh, well, this is an interesting setting, the back to top button. I like to enable this. And just to show you what it is, you can see that when I scroll down on this page, a top to back to top button will appear. And if I click this one, I will jump back to the top again. So this is nice if you have long pages and you want to or 12 pages and you want your um, visitors to easily scroll back up to the top so you will have this feature just by enabling it here in the theme options uh, i will also make another change here i will disable minify and combine uh, javascript files and minify and combine css files so this is options for speeding up your website but while building your website it's recommended to turn these off so you can enable them again when your website is ready for launch but if you use a third-party speed up plugin 
like the SG optimizer here. Uh, you should deactivate these to not uh, cause conflicts because these plugins will also minify and combine uh, scripts and uh, CSS files. So I prefer to keep this uh, disabled and uh, to work with um, plugins like the SG optimizer or WP rocket or, or whatever is your preference. So I will click save changes. Navigation, we don't need to go through. We will do that in the DV theme builder later when we create a global header. We click the builder and in the advanced tab, we will turn off the static CSS file generation. And this is for the same reason that we turned off the script and CSS minification earlier. I can also disable the product tour. This means that uh, we will not have a video uh, pop up uh, offering help uh, when we are creating the website. This is wh what I'm here for to help you. Uh, I do want to enable the latest DV Builder experience. You should have that enabled. You could also enable the classic editor if you don't like Gutenberg when you are um, editing posts, for example. Uh, but I will keep it as it is. So I click save changes. And then we have a few other uh, tabs that you don't need to worry about. We can skip layout, ads, SEO is an important is issue. It's uh, search engine optimization, how you rank at, for example, Google. Uh, but those old settings in, in Divi will not help you with SEO. So I would recommend that you use an SEO plugin like Rank Math. Or, or Joost's SEO instead to, to work with your SEO. So you can just skip this setting in the Divi theme options. Integration is interesting to know about. You can add code to the head tag and the body tag of your website globally. So for example, if you want to add a global, um, sorry, a Google Analytics script, you will do that here. Or if you want to um, integrate HubSpot or, or um, whatever, you can use this to, to um, paste scripts. So this is a really nice feature. You don't need to download any plugins to do this when you have Divi. And the last tab that, that is uh, necessary to have a look at is the updates. So you have to enter your username and your API key in order to be able to update Divi. Uh, this is also required if you want to activate some stuff in the uh, support center, for example, remote access for, for the support so they can log into your website and take a look under the hood. Um, and this is also required if you want to import uh, layout packs directly into Divi. So you should always enter those credentials here. So I'll type mine here. And the API key is found when you log into Elegant Themes. So let's open a new tab and I'll go to elegantthemes.com and I click on the account button and I'm already logged in. And uh, then I click my account in the menu. And then you see a menu item called API keys. It's a tough word for me to pronounce. Uh, and here you can see your username and uh, you can see your IP API keys. You can have uh, multiple keys if you want to, or just use one. So I will click one of my keys here to copy it. And I will go back to my theme options and I will paste it here in the API key row. And I will, will save the changes. And I have this green symbol here saying all is good. Uh, and the last thing you need to know about is the version rollback. So Divi releases updates frequently and uh, sometimes there might be a conflict if you have lots of plugins and custom code. And then it's very convenient to be able to roll back to the previous version of Divi and to investigate why those conflicts appeared when you updated. And uh, if I go back to the support center now, we can actually see here that I can enable remote access. This is because I, I um, uh, submitted my um, API key. So these are the DV theme options you need to know about. The next thing is the DV theme customizer where we will make some more settings and you find it under DV and theme customizer. 
So here I'll see a preview of my website. It doesn't look much right now. We can see that it's the div logo, so it's made with Divi. And uh, I will choose general settings and site identity. And here we can set the site title and the tagline. And uh, if we look at the end result, we can see that the title is Divi Crib and the tagline is a demo website from Divi Mundo. Divi Crib as my title. This is really important for SEO, so make sure to have your keywords and uh, brand name in there. I would recommend that for good SEO. Uh, and the tagline could be a beautiful website for everyone. Okay, that's easy enough. So a site icon is important and easy to forget. So that's what you see up here in the tab to the left of the name or the title. So here we have uh, for the example website, we have a D in a golden circle. Uh, WordPress have their WordPress logo and there we have Elegant Themes have their logo there with a star. So we'll upload an icon. It should be at least 512 times 512 pixels. So here we go. And you can download all the images and, and media files that we use in this course. So just check down in the description below this video to download the images and just follow me step by step. So I'll take the image called favicon.png and I will drag it and drop it. And now we can select the image. And uh, if you have an image that is maybe not square, you can crop it here and, and style it. But I've just uploaded a square image that is 512 pixels high and width. So I can just choose skip cropping. And uh, we can see that it shows up here in the page title. So here we have our favicon. So we go back. We can check here the layout settings. It's nothing we have to worry about. We will use the Divi Builder to, to design this. And the same thing with the type of so those are old settings that were used in earlier versions of Divi, but now we will use a global defaults and the Divi Visual Builder to create all the design. We can jump out of these general settings. And the same goes for the header navigation. We'll create that in the, the Divi Theme Builder. That's the new modern way of doing it. And we will also do that for the footer. And the buttons we will create with the Divi Visual Builder and the blog we will create a template in the theme builder and also the mobile styles we'll do directly in the Divi Visual Builder and we don't need to set any color schemes, menus, widgets or homepage settings, not right now at least and uh, the last thing that you should be aware of is the additional CSS so if you like to code you can add some uh, additional CSS here <laughs> Enough with the settings for now, let's create our pages. And if we look at the demo website, we can see that we have a home page, the start page. We have an about us page. We have a news page with a blog feed or a news feed listing all our news. We have a contact us page with a contact form and a map and FAQ and stuff. So let's create those pages. We go back to our WordPress dashboard and we go to pages. And we can see that WordPress have created two pages for us. One is a draft of a privacy policy. And uh, this is important, especially if, if you have visitors from the EU, you have maybe heard about the GDPR. So I recommend you to go to this page and fill out your own privacy policy. And we have a sample page, so we can remove that one by clicking trash when we hover it. And now it's going to our trash can. So we can go to trash and we can actually just delete it permanently. So we have a clean database. So to create a new page, we'll click just add new up here. We could also go to pages and click add new to the left. And there's actually a third way to create a new page. You can hover new up here and choose page. So all those three options result in the same thing. 
So here we go. This is how it looks in WordPress when you choose to create a new page. And we are welcome to the block editor, also known as Gutenberg. So this is the default editor in WordPress. And since we have Divi installed, we can choose to use the Divi Builder or we can use the default editor. And uh, I will actually use the default editor for now because we're just creating those pages as uh, placeholders for making our menu. So we will return here and activate the Divi Builder a little bit later in this tutorial. So I'll start by adding my title to the website and it's home for this one. And I will simply click publish. And then uh, Gutenberg asks me if I'm really, really ready to publish. So I click publish. So we created our home page. I click on the WordPress logo in the top left to go back. And we can see that we have our home page here. So I click add new again. And this time we'll create the next page, which is the about us page. So I'll just name it about us and uh, I click publish. And now I get this annoying question again. Are you ready to publish? And yes, I am. So in the next step, I will show you how you can remove this nagging warning if uh, about if you are really sure that you want to publish this page. So I go back by clicking the logo and I press uh, click add new. And we are going to call this one news. So to remove this warning, I will go uh, to the three dots in the top right to options. And I will click preferences for my block builder. And uh, I will disable the pre-publish checklist. That's the little warning that comes up when I want to publish. And I close this one. And now when I click publish, it's published immediately. So I prefer to have this setting, but it's of course up to you. Uh, and we have the last page called contact us. This one is just a link to divimundo.com, an external link in the menu. So I'll add a new page and we call this one contact oops, us and I will publish. So now we have all our pages in WordPress and we will fill them with really beautiful content a little bit later in this tutorial. Now we will explore the media library in WordPress and this is where we can upload images and uh, all kinds of media files in WordPress. So we go to the left menu and we click media. And before we uploaded this favicon, so it's already in our media library. And uh, to add new media files, we just click add new. And then uh, you can actually download all the images used in this tutorial. Uh, it's linked in the description below this video and you can upload them to follow along. So I will open my finder. Here we go. And I can just mark them all. Uh, and we, we don't need to upload the favicon again. So I will just remove that one and I will drag this and I will drop it. Now all the images will be uploaded here and it could take a little while because there are a lot of media files and images here. We have some really nice custom icons here and we have our site logo and we ha have some uh, dummy logos for our clients. And uh, we also have some really nice photos here. And these photos uh, I've downloaded from a site called pexels.com p-e-x-e-l-s dot com so that's a free uh, photo site where you can download and use uh, professional photos for your website and you don't need to uh, have any mention of the photograph or any credentials uh, you can just use them freely on commercial websites if you want to here we go we have all our media files uploaded and if i want to see them in a list i can just click this icon and uh, I will see them in this way. I can see who uploaded the files and uh, I can see if they are attached to a special post or page and I can see when they were uploaded. You could also click an image 
for example this man and you can also see the file size and the dimensions and if you want to you can click edit image and here you can crop it and uh, you can also scale it if you want to reduce the size of the image so here you have some tools but uh, we're good for now so i'll just go back here to the media library so you can also upload video files pdf files or basically not any file uh, format because there are some uh, security restrictions here but uh, you can upload most media formats that you need to work with you can also use all these images and icons they have they are free of charge to use for you if you want to have them on your website as well in wordpress you have both pages and posts and the difference is that pages is more static nature it could be the home page about us page contact page but posts are more meant for blog posts or news articles and that type of content and you can also see here under posts in the menu that we have categories and tags and if we go to pages there are just an add new link so we have some more taxonomies for posts to work with and all posts must belong to one or more categories and a category could be if you for example have a sports news site could be soccer ice hockey wrestling uh, and then you have the tags and they are more niched or narrow so that could be like a specific sports team or a specific person and tags is not mandatory so you can skip tags if you don't need them uh, but you have to have at least one category per post and this is also an, a convenient way for your visitors to browse your news articles to, to choose different categories to see them by default wordpress creates the category and categorized but it doesn't look too fancy so we're going to create our own categories and we're starting out by creating the category case and we'll have one more category called inspiration and you can create how many categories you like and uh, we're going to remove this one a little bit later but we have to make a setting before that's possible so let's go to all posts and uh, we can see that there are actually no posts here there's one post in the trash can which is the hello world which is the um, default post that wordpress creates for us so we can just delete that from the trash can keeping it empty and uh, to add a new post yeah you guessed it right we just click add new and we can take a look here at the um, demo site if you go to the news page you can see that we have the categories here in the um, navigation so we can just filter out the category that we want to see or we can browse all news from all categories and if we click a news article we can see that they have a featured image in top they belong to a category in this case case they have a header or a title and they have a published date and then we have some uh, content here could be text and images and other stuff we have a sidebar and we have related content in the bottom and then we have our global footer so the thing we are going to create now is the categories publish date comes automatically when you publish an article we're going to upload this featured image and we're going to add the main body content and the sidebar the related content block and the footer will be global elements that we will add later on in the theme builder as a post content template so let's go back here and we are going to work with the, the standard wordpress editor when we create posts this works really nice when you're creating simple news articles and uh, if you want to you can use the divi builder but we're going to save it for later when we work with our pages so we will start by adding a title for our post and i'll just type lorem ipsum my first post here and then i can click use the default editor and now i can just paste my content here and if i want to i could of course add an image or other media so i click the plus sign up to the left to add a block 
and I say that I want to add an image here. So I just drag it and drop it. And I go to the media library and I choose an image, select. And then I have added an image to my post. And you have some other blocks here that you can use, video and buttons and stuff. Let's keep it simple for now. To the right, I have some other settings. Uh, we have categories. And if this is uh, collapsed, you can expand it by clicking the arrow. And uh, I will assign this to the category case. We'll skip tags, but I want a featured image. And uh, just to explain what that is, we can see that in the top here in our post template, we have an image. This is the featured image of this post. If I go to the home page, browse down, I see the, th the latest three news articles here, and this is the featured image displayed automatically or dynamically in this grid. And if I go to the news page, this is the featured images showing above the post. So they are displayed in three different places here in our example. So let's choose a featured image for this post. I go to the media library and uh, I'll take a picture here. There we got it. And I click publish. I click on the WordPress logo in the upper left corner and I want to add another post. Here we go. Our second news article, Lorem Ipsum. Use the default editor. And this time I'm going to assign it to the category inspiration. And uh, let's set another featured image. There we go. Let's paste some content here as well. And click publish. Okay, so I've added six news articles to this demo site. Uh, and I will not let you stick around to watch me do the same thing four more times. So we will fast forward that. Welcome back. I have created six posts in two different categories. And if we take a look at our homepage, we can see that those posts are actually listed on the homepage. And we can see the featured images, the headings, publish date, category, and also the excerpt. And if I click the post, I can read the full post content. But this doesn't look too good, I think. So um, the thing we are aiming for here is on our start page or our home page, we will uh, display the three latest posts in a nice grid design. And on the news page, we will have a nice list of news and a neat sidebar. And if we click a post, we will have this design will also display related content. But this will be done later in the Divi theme builder where we will create a post template. So for now we have created our posts. Let's say you want to delete the uncategorized category in WordPress. It's kind of hard to figure out how to do that, because if you create your own categories, you can just hover it and click delete. But on categorized, there are no delete links anywhere. So the reason for this is pretty simple. This is the default category that is used if you don't choose a category. So this is the fallback category and that one can't be deleted because you must have a default category. So to change the default category, you just go to settings and writing. And here you can set another default post category. So let's change that to maybe case. So this uh, before this you have to have created your own category at least one. So we save the changes and let's go back to categories under posts. And now things have changed we can see that there's no delete link at the case category, but uncategorized can now be deleted. So I just will click delete here. And yes, I am fine with that. 
So now we deleted this ugly category called uncategorized. So this is the WordPress dashboard. It's the first thing you'll see when you log into WordPress. And here is actually a custom dashboard that's uh, introduced by SiteGround. And if we go to plugins, we can see that there's a plugin called WordPress Starter that's introduced by SiteGround or included when we install WordPress. And you should always uh, delete plugins that you don't use because they can affect the page security and also the page speed. So we don't need this WordPress Starter plugin. So I will deactivate it and delete it. And now if we return to the dashboard, you will see the default WordPress dashboard instead. It looks a little bit messy, so we will clean it up quickly. So this welcome to WordPress box, we can just click dismiss. And then we have all these boxes. So if we click screen options in the top right, we can actually decide which boxes we should see and which ones we should hide. So uh, maybe WordPress events and news is not super relevant for us. So let's hide that one. Site health is a nice thing to see. And it's also nice to see that our site health is good. Uh, quick draft is something that I never used. So we can actually hide that one. Uh, at a glance, let's drop this one there. It uh, could be interesting to see uh, the content on our website and the uh, theme and the WordPress version. And the activity, we have uh, published some posts. Let's drag that one up there and we can close the screen options. So this looks a little bit more clean and we got rid of one uh, unnecessary plugin. We can actually jump back to plugins again just to see because there are two more plugins there. We have the SG optimizer or the site ground optimizer. And as it says in the description, this plugin uh, will link your WordPress applications with all the performance optimizations provided by SiteGround. So this will basically make your website load faster. And this is a good thing, but I would recommend that you deactivate this while building or creating your website. And when you are done, uh, we could activate it. So I will deactivate it for now. Then we also have a SiteGround security plugin that adds some uh, security features. And that's also a really nice thing. So if you want to check the settings for the security plugin, you can click SG security in the um, menu. And we can see the recent uh, activity like logins and, and uh, page visits. And uh, we can actually see that they have activated lots of... Uh, security features by default so we don't have to do that ourselves and also some login security so if someone tries to log in with the wrong credentials they will be blocked or uh, disable admin username we can actually do that you should never use admin as a username that's the first thing that the hackers will try to to use so let's keep that one on to have some good security and we go back to the dashboard Okay, so we will first go through the most important settings in WordPress, and that's actually in the settings tab. So we click that one and we will land at the general settings. So we already looked at a couple of these settings before, like the title, tagline, and the URLs. So that's already fixed. Uh, we have the administration email address, so that's the main administrator for the website. You can have several admin users, but this is the main admin. And this is the one that will have email, uh, email notifications if there is a problem on the website or if something is uh, automatically updated or so. Uh, site language is also important. This should match the content on your website uh, because this will give a signal to the search engines uh, to index it for that language. And uh, also some um, small texts like read more and stuff from the theme uh, will be in this uh, language. So time zone can also affect if you schedule posts to be published at a certain time. So you can find your time zone and I'm uh, in Sweden, so I will choose Stockholm. So I'll click save changes. And uh, let's go to the reading tab. 
and this is also a really important th uh, setting to, to, to look into. You have to do this. Uh, the first one here is your homepage displays. And you might remember that if you go to divicrib.com, our homepage is here and it lists all our blog posts. So this is from the early days of WordPress when it was just a blog platform. So this is actually still the default setting of WordPress. But we are creating a corporate website and we don't want it to look like a blog we want to have a, a real home page so instead of displaying our latest posts on the home page we will show a static page so we click that one and then we can choose which page that should be the home page and in this case we've called it home so if i save the changes and reload my home page we can actually see that the posts are gone and we have our home page, which is just a uh, heading for now. Um, so that's the first and uh, really important thing to do here in the reading settings. The other one is search engine visibility. So when we are creating our website, we don't want Google to index it and people finding it by mistake, dropping in because there could be incorrect information or, or information that shouldn't be public yet. So I uh, always discourage search engines from indexing this site by clicking this box and then I click save changes. So now there's a tag on this page saying that uh, search engine shouldn't index it. The next important setting that I always look at when I start with WordPress uh, is permalinks. So that's your URL structure. We can go back to our website here and we can see that we have divcrib.com and if I click about us I can see the URL there the permalink is divcrib.com slash about us so the URL up here uh, is taken from the page name the title of the page and if I click contact us we have the same thing here it's slash contact us so this is a nice permalink structure and we can see here that it's called post name this is uh, the default permalink structure when you install wordpress and if you don't use uh, a blog feature or, or news on your website uh, this is a good thing you can leave it at this and just save but if you have a blog or uh, like a new section which we are using uh, let's have a look at the demo site there we go so here we have our news but we want our news posts or articles to have a logic permalink structure. So here we have slash news, we have the category, which is case for this news article, and we have the uh, news article title here. So that's the permalink structure that we want. And since on this page we only have post name in the permalink structure, we can have a look. So if I click one of my posts, I can see that the permalink is just dbcrypto.com and then we have the URL just at the root. I would like to change that. And we can also look at the Elegant Themes blog. It's always inspiring to look at the, the professionals. And if I click like a blog post here, like a free header and footer template, I can see that the URL here is elegantthemes.com slash blog. That's what we call news on our websites. And we have DV resources. That's the category for this post. And then we have, we have the post name. So this is the permalink structure that we want to create for our posts. So I'll choose a custom structure and uh, I will delete this and I will say that it should be slash news slash, and we want to have the category so that's a dynamic field and we want to have our post name and that's also a dynamic field that's why we have these percentage uh, signs there i will save it and if i go back to our um, development website here we have the old structure i try to refresh this page i will have an error message because now we have a new url for this post so if i click the post again here to the right I can actually see that we have a new permalink st structure. So I can see that this post uh, is under news slash case, which is the category for this article. And we have the post name 
in the URL. And if I choose another news article from, uh, from another category, I can see that it's news slash, and now it's inspiration. So that's the category for, for this article. So I would say that this is more user-friendly and uh, also better for the search engines and not putting everything down here in the root. That was the most important settings in WordPress that you need to know about. And uh, just a friendly reminder, don't forget uh, when you are ready with your website and ready to publish that you need to, to go here to settings and reading and you need to uh, remove this discourage search endings from indexing this site and save because otherwise it's like you open a new store but you forget to unlock the doors. So this is easy to forget. And uh, the other one uh, thing that you should remember when you launch your website is that you should activate the SG Optimizer plugin. So that was the settings and now we are ready to start with the fun stuff, the creative stuff, and that is uh, creating design and content for our website with the Divi Visual Builder. Okay, it's time to get creative. So we'll start creating content and design. And we'll be using the most powerful visual page builder for WordPress, which is the Divi Visual Builder. So we're taking this boring design and we will transform it into this beautiful website. And we'll be using the Divi Visual Builder to create the sticky header and the menu. We will of course use it for all the body content and we will use it to design our global footer. We'll also use the Divi Visual Builder to create templates in the Divi Theme Builder for blog posts, category pages, the 404 arrow page, etc, etc. So we can use the Visual Builder for basically anything on our website. So we will go through all the design options and features in Divi during this tutorial. So it's a learning by doing approach. But first, I just wanted to give you like a brief overview so you understand the concept of the Divi Visual Builder. And maybe you can see if this is something for you. So I'm going to enable the Visual Builder here on our demo website by clicking the button in the top bar when I'm logged into WordPress. And one of the really fine things with the Divi Visual Builder is that we can see exactly the same thing that our website visitors can see. But now we can click the content and we can just edit it directly like this. If I want to switch places, maybe with this image on the right, I just grab it and drop it. And then we take the text and we put it to the left and maybe the button as well. If I want to access more advanced design settings, I can just click the module and click the cogwheel and go to the design tab. And here, for example, we have the box shadow, which can look really nice and I can tweak it however I want. And we can add an animation just like this. But please be careful with these ones. And... Uh, we can, of course, change all the colors easily by going to this section, to the background, and choose another background color. Or we can choose freely here from the palette. One other really nice thing with the Divi Visual Builder is that I can duplicate and recycle content, and this will really speed up your design process. So here we have three blurbs, and let's say that I want three more. Instead of creating those from scratch, I can just click here and I can duplicate this. I can duplicate this one and I can duplicate this one. And now I just have to change the text and maybe change the image. Go to image and icon, click this one. And let's take that icon there. And boom, we have our new blurb in there. So it's a really fast way of designing websites. Just to explain the basics. When we hover here, you can see that we have a blue box. And this is called a section in Divi. 
And in this section, we have this nice background image with an overlay, making it dark. So the white text is easy to read. And we also have a divider shaping the background image. Inside this section, we have a row, which is the green box. And inside the row, you can have one or more columns. And in the columns, we have these gray boxes, and those are the content modules. And there are over 40 modules in Divi. So here we have an image module. Here's a text module. Here's another text module. Here's a button module, another button module. And this is a row with one and two columns. This is a blurb module. This is a slider module. This is the blog module displaying the latest three blog posts. So there are lots of modules to use in Divi and they are all included. You don't have to add any extra plugins to get access to them. So let's explore the Divi Builder interface. So in the bottom here, you have this purple ball or circle. So if I click it, you will expand the Divi Builder menu. And this is really useful. So if we start looking at the left, we can actually change the interface. So now we have the desktop view in green. We could change it to the iPad view and preview. And we can see that now there is a mobile menu here. And we can change it to the smartphone view. So this is really useful for creating mobile friendly and responsive websites that you can preview it. And you can actually even choose which um, smartphone model that you want to preview it in. Okay, we go back. Another really nice view that I like is this zoomed out view with a magnifying glass. So I click it and now I can get like an helicopter view on my website so I can see if the design is balanced and if I need to increase the, the padding or so. And by the way, to, to increase the spacing, I just grab and I drag. So this is also a really nice feature in Divi. This one is called the wireframe view. And this is also really useful if you have lots of content. So you can see like the backend structure of your website. So before I said that we had a section in the top, the blue area, we had a row with one column and we had image, text and text. And if we go back to the uh, desktop view, we can see that here is the section, the blue one, here is the row, and inside the row we had one column with an image, we had text and text. So this can be really useful and it's also a really quick way to move around objects, like doing it just like this, dragging and dropping. My favorite view is of course the desktop view. And there's where I often start my design. You can see that I did switch places and, and this is now visible here in the desktop view. So I can just take this text, drop it where it should be down there. And uh, we also have the three dots there. And uh, here is where you can customize your Divi Builder settings. I like to have the Builder interaction mode in click mode, which I already set. The default one is called hover mode. So if I choose hover mode, you can see that when I hover the content, immediately all the options comes out here with the cogwheel and the delete icon and stuff. And um, I think this can be a little bit annoying to have everything visible and jumping around, especially if you have lots of content. So if I choose the click mode instead, you can see that when I hover around, I only see the border, but I have to click to actually see the edit options, this little gray box here. So I think this is a more clean way for me. And uh, here you can set a bunch of different settings for how you want your Divi Builder to, to uh, operate by default. Okay, let's have a look in the middle here, the different purple icons. So we have the plus icon. And this is really useful because here you can load stuff from the library. We have over 1500 uh, ready-made layouts from Divi that's free to use. You can just import them. We can actually try that. Let's choose a nice maybe coffee house. And uh, here we have a complete website layout. We have an about page, a blog page, contact us page, homepage, etc., etc. 
So maybe I'll have the landing page and I can just use this layout and we can actually also view the live demo before we import it so we can test it. So there are loads of ready-made website layouts, really professional design that you can just download and use for free. And you can just also sell them to your clients if you sell websites. So you have the right to do that too without any additional cost. Okay, so we go back and we can choose if we want to replace the existing content. So let's do that. We'll replace the start page with this new one and I choose use this layout. So the, all the images and uh, design settings are now being imported. So it could take like up to a minute or so to import it. Uh, often it goes a little bit quicker than that. When you have this uh, layout imported, you could of course edit everything in it. You can change the fonts, the colors, the images and the text. So this is not like the free limited uh, themes that you download where you have to have a button to the left and you have to have some kind of bar in the bottom uh, saying built with WordPress. Uh, this is completely customizable. So here we have our ready-made design. And now I can just start working here. And uh, just like before, we can just switch places of the content. We could change colors and images and whatever we want. So this is a really quick and easy way to create websites with ready-made layouts. But in this course, we will create a design from scratch. The next one is this one, save to library. This means that you can uh, add your design or your layouts to your Divi library and import them to other pages and like reuse or recycle the content. So this is another way of making your design process more efficient. So we have the next one. We can just delete all the content on our page like this. And then we can see actually how it looks like when you start with a blank page in Divi. So we can create a row here with three columns. And here we can choose from the like 46 I think it is modules so we can put in a blurb like that we can add for example a contact form and we could maybe add an image and, and this is also a great time saver that you can type image here or start typing image and then you get the module filtered out so I can click it here we can just click and replace the content. So this is how it looks like when you create a blank page. Then I could just duplicate this, this section and I get all the content here. And maybe we can add a background image. Clicking background and the image icon. And don't worry, I will go through all this uh, <laughs> in a good tempo in the tutorial. Just showing you an overview now. And now we have a section with the background. And now the text is hard to read. So I go into this module, I click design, text, and I say that the text should be light. And now it's easier to read. Just to show you a few examples of how to work with the Divi Visual Builder. Okay, we have the next uh, icon here is the cogwheel. And here I can do some page settings, like setting the title of the page. We can add a featured image that's maybe more interesting for posts, blog articles. And uh, we can actually have advanced split testing. You can do an A and a B version of the website and test, see which one converts the best. This is also included in Divi. And we have some global uh, design and advanced settings for the page. And for you who like coding, you can add custom CSS to all the pages, but you can also add it globally in the Divi theme customizer. Okay, the next one here is the clock. And here we can see our editing history. And maybe I didn't want to uh, remove my original design. Then I can just go back to the this first timestamp here. And voila, we are back. So it's okay to make mistakes because you can uh, go back again in time. Like a time traveling machine. And the last one. We are going to look uh, deeper into that one in the end of the tutorial, but here you can ex actually export your design in a JSON file. 
So this means that you can later import it to other WordPress installation. And uh, you can also import designs and uh, I will provide the design for the Divi crib, all this, the header, footer, templates, the pages in JSON files and at the divimundo.com you will be able to download these designs and import them into your website. So this is basically uh, the settings in the Divi Builder. We will uh, go through all of them and more <laughs> uh, during this tutorial. So I recommend you to install Divi and uh, follow me step by step. But this was just a brief overview to, to show you some of the features in the Divi Visual Builder. <music> Now we're going to create our global header in the Divi Theme Builder. We'll start with the basic menu with the logo to the left and the menu links to the right. And we will create a menu item with the drop down sub menu as well. And uh, we link to our sub pages on the website and we also have an external link that will open in a new tab. So I'll show you how to achieve that as well. If we scroll down, you can see that this header is uh, sticky and it changes a little bit when we scroll so it doesn't take up uh, as much space from the actual body content. And then we will add this uh, top bar with social media icons to the left with a nice hover effect and a call to action button up to the right. And uh, in the next step, we will uh, look at the mobile menu for uh, tablets and smartphones. And it's a classic hamburger menu. And we'll do some small CSS tweaks as well to make it look better. Okay, so we jump into our development site and I just added uh, a little bit of content on the homepage just to make it possible to scroll the menu. So we can see it, how, how it behaves when it's sticky. The first thing we need to fix is this. You can see that we have a bunch of links that shouldn't be up here in the menu. So we start by going to our WordPress dashboard. And from here we go to appearance and menus. And we're going to create our main menu. So I'll just call it main menu. And uh, I will also say that this is our primary menu and click create menu. Now I can add my pages on the website. So I can actually choose view all. So I see all four and I click select all. Now I can change the order of these links. So here I am, um, see, let's go back. Here we are. So we have home, about us, news, contact us, and the external link. So here we have home, about us, then we have news, and then contact us. So I just drag and drop to achieve the order here that I want. And uh, then we have the two sub menu links here under news, which is the category pages. So let's go back and check our categories. And here they are, case and inspiration. So I will select all and add to menu. Now, in order to make them a sub menu, I will just drag this one to news and then I will indent it a little bit like this and you can see that now that it is a sub menu to the news link and i'll do the same thing for inspiration and there we go and uh, i can actually save the menu so if we will preview the site now we can see that it looks a little bit better we have the right or the correct links here in the menu but then we had the last one, which would be an external link. So then I choose custom links. And I type in the URL that I want for my custom link. So in this case, it's the Divimundo. And the link text should be Divimundo. And I will add this to the menu and it will end up last in the list. 
and I want this one to open in a new tab. And for some strange reason, there are no option for this when I open here, so there is no checkbox. So this is a little bit hidden by WordPress, so I have to browse to the top and uh, expand screen options. And here I can click to display link target. And when I go back down here, I can click this new checkbox, open link in a new tab and save the menu. So if we go back here and refresh the page, you can see that we have the Divimundo link. And if I click it, it will open in a new tab. Okay, so we have placed the correct links in the menu. Let's start designing it. So we start at Divi and Divi Theme Builder. So this is the place where we are creating our global uh, templates for the website. So we will have a global header and we will have a global footer. And then we'll create some more templates later in this tutorial. So we click add global header and build global header. And we will build this one from scratch. I'll start by inserting a single row with one column. And I will insert a menu module in this row. So I search for menu and choose the menu module. In the content tab, I can see that it's my main menu that we just created that's active. If we click logo, we can choose the logo for our website. So I click this one that we upload, uploaded to our media library. And now we can see the logo. And since the text is white, you can see it against the light background, but we'll fix that in a minute. Under elements, you can add a shopping cart icon if you use uh, an e-commerce store or a search icon like this, but uh, we'll not use it for this website. In the background tab, I can change the background color and we will use this dark, dark gray. It's 1C, 1C, 1C from our color uh, palette. So now we can see the full logo, but now the text disappeared on the dark background. So let's go to the design tab to fix that. And we click menu text and we can change the menu text color. So I'll change it to white and now we can see it again. We should also change the menu font from the default font and we should you shall use a font called Carla. So that's a Google font that's included in Divi and we will use it throughout our website. And uh, if we look at the demo site, we can see that it's in all caps and that we have a nice hover effect with gold when you hover the um, menu. So we'll fix that too. So all caps, we can click in the menu font style. There we go. The menu text color is white and to change the hover effect, this is a really neat feature in Divi. You can just hover menu text color option and then you can click this mouse icon for setting hover effects. And now I can click this hover state and choose gold. So now I can see how a link would look, look like in hover mode. And if I click here again in desktop, I can see how it looks like in idle. So this way we can change background colors and lots of stuff in Divi. It's really, really powerful. We have the menu text. I will make it a little bit bigger, 16 pixels. So now it starts to look like something. Also, I want the menu links to be, be right aligned. So it should look like this with the logo to the left and the links to the right. I can just mention in the layout tab in the top, I can choose if I want to have a left aligned logo, if I want it to be center aligned like this, or if it should be inline centered. So the logo is between the menu links but I'm choosing the left aligned design. We open menu text tab again and we choose to text alignment right. Good. Okay, so I'm fully aware that this looks a little bit strange with the white padding around, so we will fix that. I will go to the cogwheel on the section settings and click background and change that from white to dark gray. So now it looks a little bit better. 
Uh, and now I will change the sizing so it's not that high. Maybe something like that and like that. And also the padding for the row, I will just remove that like this. And if you prefer to see the ex exact numbers instead of dragging, you can just click the cogwheel, go to the design tab and spacing. And here we see that we added some padding, but it wasn't the same. So I would like to add 15 pixels there and 15 pixels there. Nice. So we got our header. I can just save if something would, ha would happen. And uh, can also see here that the uh, submenu looks okay, but we have a blue line there that I would like to remove. So I will open the um, settings for the menu and go to the design tab and the drop down menu. And uh, I will check the drop down menu color and I will set it to transparent. And now it's gone. So I think this looks more clean. I could also add the golden color here like this, but I like to just remove it like this. Okay, nice. So we save and uh, close this one. And to be sure, I click save here in the Divi theme builder as well. And now we can check our website out by refreshing and having a look and here we have a quite nice menu going on. And if I scroll, we can see that it's not sticky. So we are going to fix that. We're going back to the Divi theme builder and uh, editing our global header. First of all, before I forget it, we should do one more change. So this is the row. I will do some changes to the row settings. I want this to be a little bit wider. So if we check this page, we can see that the logo is starts here and the menu stops here. And uh, this one is a little bit more narrow. So I wanted to take more space. So in the row settings, I go to design, sizing and width. So I will set the maximum width to 1200 pixels. So now it's a little bit bigger. It can uh, never be wider than this and it will be 80% of the screen width up to 1200 pixels. So that's how width and max width works. I will actually do a little uh, addition here because I want all my rows in the entire website to be have a max width of 1200 pixels. So we're going to use global presets, which is a really powerful addition to Divi. So if I right click the max width setting, I can, um, nope, I right click the design setting, sorry. And I say that I want to apply this to the active preset. Are you sure this will affect all rows using the row default preset across your entire site? Do you wish to proceed? Yes. So what this means is that all future and past rows that are created on this website will have this value. I could change this in um, specific rows uh, if I want to, but the default value will be this. So this is a super easy and convenient way to create global templates in Divi. So I don't have to do this setting in all rows in the future. And to change a global preset, you can go into the module or the row or the section and you see preset up there, default, and I can click the pen. And now it's a little bit more grayish color up here and it's the presets and I can change the global presets here. So I can see that this is a custom global preset since it's a bit darker. So this is a way to update your global presets. We're going to look a little bit closer into this later in the course. So this was just a, a sneak peek. So I will save this. And uh, yes, the task was to make this uh, menu sticky so that if I scroll, it should stick like this. And also when I scroll, I want the logo to disappear like this. 
and I want the text to go out to the corner and be a little bit smaller so it won't take focus from my main content. So let's start by doing it sticky. So I will edit my section settings by clicking the cogwheel and I go to the advanced tab. And there we have scroll effects. And you can do lots of cool stuff here. I will check the sticky position that is default do not stick. And I will choose stick to top. Then you can do lots of fancy fine tuning here. But I will uh, stick with the default settings here and click the green button to save. I will save my settings and I will go back to our development website. And before the menu worked like this. Now when I refresh it, it's actually sticky and follows me down on the website. So it's pretty easy to make a sticky uh, menu in Divi. And uh, since it's a global header in the theme builder, it will um, be displayed on all pages. Uh, that was an external link, so it won't be displayed there for natural reasons. But on all the pages on my website, you will see this header. Okay, so we wanted this shrinking effect on scroll. So we go back to the theme builder and uh, we will edit the um, menu module first to fix the logo. So I will go to design and sizing and there we can set the logo width and I will set it to its auto now. But if I want to change the sticky mode, it's similar to how we made a hover effect before. So I hover this setting and there's the hover effects. And on the side of that, we have this pin symbol that is our sticky effects. So if I click that one, I can choose the sticky mode and I can say that this logo should be zero pixels wide when it's sticky. So uh, I will save and this will auto save sometimes. Let's see if it works. And uh, I will try to refresh my page. And now when I scroll, we can see that the logo is actually disappearing on scroll. Okay, so now we want it to shrink both the height or the padding and also the text, and it should be out to the right. So this is the look that we are going for. So let's change the section width first of all so the text could move out to the right corner so we go to the design settings for the row and there we have the sizing and uh, i will say that it should be 100 percent wide but it should have a maximum width of 95 percent otherwise the um, text will be in the corner looking a bit tight and uh, I actually made a mistake now, so I will remove that. So what I have to do first is I hover the width and uh, I click sticky settings here, the icon. And I click the sticky mode and now I say 100%. Otherwise it would apply to all views, even the, when you just enter the website. And I do the same for max width. I hover it and I choose the sticky mode there. And I say that it should be 95%. <clears throat> there we go. And I also want this text to be a little bit smaller. So I close the row settings. And uh, I click the menu module. I click the design tab. And the menu text. And I think you're getting a, a, a grip of this now. I have the menu text size. So I hover it and I choose the sticky mode. I click the pin symbol. And I choose sticky mode. And I changed the text size from 16 pixels to 14 pixels on sticky mode. And we save it here and we save the template design. So if I click my development site, it looks like this before. And now if I refresh, it looks the same when it's not sticky. But when I scroll, you can see that it's different. The logo disappears and the text shrinks and jumps out to the right corner. So just one small uh, adjustment here. I want this padding here to, to shrink so the, the menu isn't that high. So I want this effect that it will be a little bit 
tighter in the design. So I'll go back to the theme builder and I will go to my section settings and I will hit the design tab, go to spacing. And uh, you might remember that we had 15 pixels of padding. So if I hover and click the sticky mode and switch to sticky state, I will say that I want to have zero padding in top and zero padding in bottom when in sticky mode. So I close this one and it's auto saving for me. So I go back to my website, I refresh. And now when I scroll, you can see that the logo is gone. The text is smaller. It's out in the right corner and it's not as much padding. So it's more discreet. So this looks pretty neat, I think. So now it's just uh, one more thing to add to our desktop menu. And that's the top bar here with social media icons with a nice hover effect and the call to action button. Okay, so we will head back to the theme builder to continue building our menu and adding the top bar. So I'll hover this section and click the blue plus sign to add a new section. And I choose a regular section. This time we should insert a row with two columns. We'll uh, add the social media links to the left and the call to action button to the right. And I will insert a module that's called the social media follow. And I will close it for now and we'll add our background color to this section. So I click the cogwheel for the section. I click background and I choose the dark gray background. There we go. Okay, so let's fix these social media icons. I click the cogwheel for, for the module and uh, let's go to the first one, the Facebook icon. So I can change the link here to my social media account. Since this is a demo page, I'll leave it as is. And uh, then I can change the background color of this Facebook icon. So Divi automatically set the brand color for Facebook, the dark blue and the light blue for Twitter and the pink one for Instagram, etc. So I will change the background to transparent by clicking this icon. And uh, we want to have another hover color for the background. And I think you recognize this process. I hover the background settings and I click the hover icon, the mouse arrow and I activate the hover state. And now I can change to gold. Looks pretty neat, but as you can see, there is a small rounded corner here and I want to change that. So we have this square, a little bit Scandinavian minimalistic design. So we'll go to the design tab, border, and we see that there are rounded corners by three pixels. So I will set zero pixels and then we have the square logo. Looks nice. So I will go back and now I will actually delete Twitter and I will duplicate Facebook one, two, three times. So we have four Facebook icons. So I will now go to number two and I will change the social network to LinkedIn. And uh, I will go to background since DV is helpful and adding the brand background color for us. I will just remove that. I can change the link here. And uh, let's change the third one. We can add Twitter. Change the background color to transparent. And the fine thing is that it remembers our hover color, the golden one, since we duplicated it before. So we don't have to do that again. And we have the last one. I click the cogwheel and uh, I change the network to Instagram. There we go. And we change the background color. And don't forget to change the link to your social network. Nice. I'll save and uh, we could actually have a look. This is how it looks now. And if I refresh, we now have this top bar. It's not on the top, it's on the bottom. We're going to fix that, but, but we can see the social media links and that the hover effect works. So we go back 
and um, we can actually take this one and just drop it in the top so now it's more of a top bar but it's way too much padding in here so let's fix that by dragging and dragging and let's have a look at the row padding as well so I click the cogwheel the green one and go to the design and spacing okay I see that I made a small mistake earlier the default padding is now zero top and bottom for all rows and this happened when we changed the global default settings for sizing to max with 12, 1200 pixels earlier and I happen to include the spacing on that row as well that was zero padding top and bottom so let's fix that quickly by going to the preset settings click the pen go to design spacing and change this global setting that all rows should have zero pixels padding I don't want that I just want that on specific rows yes I'm sure and let's save and uh, we go back to this row in the menu design spacing we'll have zero pixels top padding and bottom padding for that specific row okay and we go back here and we set the sign spacing and we have zero padding top and bottom here as well but I don't want this to be applied to all uh, rows in our uh, website on the pages as well so that's why I don't want that as a global setting okay we're back in business we also want to add this thin gray, gray line as, as a divider between the top bar and the menu I'll click the cogwheel for this section and design and let's go to border and here we can set the border styles and I can have a border on all four sides so I can just drag this one to add that but now I just want a border to the bottom so I click that and uh, we can choose like 333 three, three maybe and the bottom border width should be not zero pixels but maybe two and there we go a real subtle line looks really nice okay and uh, I want also to change the width of this row because I want the social media links and the buttons to go out to the corners like this up here and this up here so I go to the design tab and sizing and the width should be 100% and the max width should also be 100% because I want the button to be all the way out in the corner when we created and um, well here I want to make a small adjustment because I want a little bit of spacing to the left for our social media icons so in the design tab I go to spacing and uh, we change the padding to the left to 1% so then we have a small gap there makes the design looks better okay and we have a final tweak of our social media buttons because they are not really centered align here they are a little bit higher than the middle and now when I try to grab them you can see that they are overlap because we have so much content in here so first of all let me change my settings in the DV Visual Builder by clicking the dots and change that to click mode. Okay, so now I don't have all these overlapping options and now I can click. But then when I click I have all these options again and it, I could find it like that. But sometimes it's actually impossible when you have overlapping design and lots of tight elements. So one thing you can do then is to choose the wireframe uh, mode down to the left. And then you can open the social media uh, module and then go back to desktop and you can edit it. Or you could open the layer view down to the right. So this was introduced a while ago. So when I open that I can see all the different elements on the site. I can click open all. 
and now I can choose my social media. I can see that, it, that it's highlighted up to the left and I can click the cogwheel to edit it. So this is also a way to find overlapped elements. And I will go to the design tab and I will use this time the transform options. So this is a way to move around stuff and it's, it's really powerful. You can turn things around like this and yeah, you can do pretty cool effects here. But for now, I just want to tweak it a little bit and move it a little bit further down. So I will click the chain here. Otherwise, it will move both uh, in the X and Y axis at the same time like this. And I don't want that. I just want to, to move it up and down. So I press zero and I deactivate the chain. And now I can move it freely up and down. So let's set it like five pixels down or so. So now it will look much better. And I will close this one. Okay, we save. And now we should add the button to the right corner here. So I click the plus button in the second module. And we should search for the button module. So we click that one and we can choose our button link text. Go for Divi Mundo and we can insert a link. So here you can type any URL like divimundo.com or you can click the dynamic uh, content icon to choose a page link on your website. So I could, for example, choose the news page like this and we have created an internal link. And I can choose the button target or the link target, should it be the same window or in a new tab. But I'm happy with this one. So I go to the design settings and the alignment of this button should be to the right. And this text styling we can actually leave for now and go to the button styling. Now I want to use custom styles for this button. I don't want it to have this baby blue color. So we'll start by setting the button text and I will use 12 and uh, we will have a button text color that is white. We scroll down and the button background should be golden. So we choose that from our palette. The border, button border color, that's the word I'm looking for, should also be golden. Now it starts to look something like the end result I want. Then we have the button border radius. It's kind of rounded like we saw before on the social media icons. So I will change that from three to zero to have the square button. I could easily say 50 pixels here and we have a really nice round button design. But uh, for this minimalistic website, I will set a zero border radius. I can also add some button letter spacing, like two pixels to increase the spacing between the buttons, uh, sorry, between the letters. That looks kind of nice and more easy to read. And we'll change the button font from the default to Carla. I will also change the font weight from regular to bold. And uh, the button font style should be all caps. I want to show a button icon on hover like this. And we can actually keep the standard icon there. Otherwise you can change from a lot of predefined icons here in Divi. Uh, and the button icon color should be white. It should be placed in the right and only be shown when hovering. Okay, so we're getting close, but I don't want this jumping effect when I hover. And I also want the button to have more padding inside. So let's fix that by going to the spacing tab. And uh, we will add some top and bottom padding. So I'll set nine to top. And here's another trick to save some time in Divi. If I want to have the same bottom padding, I can just click this link or chain symbol and it will be synced. So we'll have the same top and bottom. So if I would increase this one, the other one will follow. Or if I type nine, that one will be nine. So that's a nice time saver. And the right and left padding, I'll set to 28 pixels and I will use the same symbol, the same feature here. 
Okay, so if I hover, you can see now that it's not jumping. The icon there fits into the bottom, so it looks much better. Okay, so I'm happy with my button there. And uh, I'll exit and save. So let's preview our page. Here we go. I will refresh it. And now we can see that we actually have the top bar and we have the button. And if I scroll, the top bar disappears and the main menu shrinks and is sticky. So this is a pretty nice menu, I think. And you can actually download this design, this layout, as a JSON file. You'll find the link in the description below the video. So one more thing that's easy to forget is that we want to link the logo to the home page. So this is a best practice. And it's really easy to achieve. We just go to our um, header, our global header in the theme builder. And we click the cogwheel for the menu module. And we go to the link tab in the content section. And logo link URL should just be a slash or a shift 7. And uh, we save. And we save. And now the logo will link to the start page or to the home page, wherever you are on the website. <laughs> So the final chapter to creating our global header is uh, styling the mobile menu. And it should look something like this with our top bar up here. And then we have our hamburger menu. And when we tap it, it expands in a full width menu with all our links. So we head back to the theme builder. And uh, mobile optimizing your design is pretty easy in Divi. Down to the left, you have your different devices, so you can preview it in tablet or in mobile. And all the design settings you do for tablet will be inherited to the mobile settings. So it's a time saver to actually start with the tablet design and then go to mobile and tweak if you want to do something different uh, specific for mobile. So what we can see here is that the top bar looks a bit strange. In desktop, we have two columns. But in tablet and mobile, the responsive design breaks these two columns into one column, so they are put on top of each other. So this is good most of the times, but now I want to have these two columns side by side. So we're going to fix that with a small CSS snippet. So we head back to the desktop view, and I will click the cogwheel for the row, and we'll go to the advanced tab. But don't worry, this is not too advanced. We open the custom CSS tab. And this is available in all sec sections, rows and modules. So you can tweak the CSS here if you want to. In the main element, I'll type display, colon, flex, and a semicolon. And if I preview it in a tablet, I can now see that there are actually two columns side by side. And the same thing for mobile. But I can see that there's a spacing here that I don't want. So let's fix that by going to the design tab, sizing, and use custom gutter width. And I choose yes. So by reducing this to one, we tighten up the space inside of this row. Perfect. So we have a nice looking top bar. So now we could fix uh, the design of the uh, hamburger menu. So if I open it, it will be white background with white text. So it's kind of hard to read. It's some kind of green tur turquoise uh, color here on the hamburger menu and it's not full width. So we have some work to do here. So I'll open the options for the mobile menu and I go to the design tab. And uh, we'll click the drop down menu because the mobile menu is a drop down menu. And the background of the drop down menu should be dark gray. So now it looks much better already. And if we uh, scroll down, we have the mobile menu background color. Well, we can add that as a dark uh, gray as well. Uh, it doesn't make any difference and we also have to have the mobile menu text color so we can set that to white even if it's white already 
So we can go to icons and we can change the styling of the hamburger menu icon color from this green color to white. So now it looks much better. I can also change the size of the hamburger menu, but I think the default size looks pretty good. So I can just uh, undo this by clicking this um, circular arrow icon. So this looks pretty fine, but I want to do two additional tweaks and I will give you two CSS snippets. The first one will make this icon turn into an X or a close icon when I open the mobile menu. I think that looks nicer. And the second CSS snippet will make this one full width. So we'll have this design. We have the close icon and the full width menu. So let's head to divimundo.com. There we go. And we'll head to the English site, if you don't prefer Spanish. And we go to the blog. And we scroll down and we find six tips for a better DV mobile menu. And we'll use two of these tips. So we scroll down and there we have change the collapse Hamburg icon into an X when open that one. So I will simply copy this CSS snippet. I will exit the theme builder and we'll go into the, the Divi theme customizer to add some custom CSS. So we choose a Divi theme customizer. So this is another way to add custom CSS to Divi. And in the bottom, we have additional CSS. So here I can paste the snippet. And if I preview it in mobile and click here, I can see that it has already changed to the close icon. And then we had the other snippet to make this full width. So we scroll down, make the mobile menu full width number five. And I'll copy that one and I paste it in the Divi theme customizer. Sweet, it's full width. Okay, let's close that. And we go back uh, to the Divi theme builder for a final tweak. So now the if I refresh this one and uh, let's have a look in the mobile mode and I scroll, it will be sticky. And I would actually like to turn off the um, sticky mode for just the mobile menu, because this is a small screen and I don't want the menu to take up place when you scroll. So let's go back to the theme builder and to the section where the menu is. I click the cogwheel. I go to advanced and scroll effects. So this were, was where we set that we want to add stick to top as uh, for our menu. And then I click the responsive settings on this icon with the smartphone. And I go to tablet and I say for tablet, I don't want this to stick to top. I say do not stick. And when I go to phone, you can see that this value is inherited from the uh, tablet mode. So I click save and I click or choose command S on my Mac or control S on PC to quick save. And if I go back to my website and refresh and scroll, we can see, hmm, let's refresh that once more. Hmm, okay, I did something wrong there. Let's go back. Okay, I didn't save it. Click save and exit again. And we go back and refresh this. And now when I scroll, it's gone, so it's not sticky anymore. So that was creating and styling a mobile menu in Divi. It's time to move all the way down from our global header down to our global footer. And we're creating this one in the Divi theme builder as well. 
And as you can see, we have our site logo up here linked to our home page. We have a boilerplate, a short description of the company here. We have our social media links. We have shortcuts with the most important links on our website. We have the contact information. And down here we have copyright information and we're going to do a little tweak. So this year will be injected um, dynamically via the Divi dynamic content feature. So it will be updated automatically each year. And last but not least, we link to our privacy policy. So we head back to our development website and go to our WordPress dashboard. And we head down to Divi and Divi Theme Builder. And before we create our global footer, I will head into our global header because we will recycle the social media icons that we use in the header. And now it's hidden behind this little tab. So I'll go to the wireframe mode. And here we have the social media follow module. And I will save this one to the Divi library by clicking the save icon, the arrow that points down. And I will name it social media. And I will save it to the library. And uh, we can exit. And if I go to the Divi library, we can see that we now have something here. We have a layout a module called social media. And uh, this means that we can uh, use this one uh, throughout our website and just easily import it into any page or content. Well, since the icons are actually white, you can see it here in the white background, but in a minute you'll see how it looks like in the footer. So let's head back to Divi and the Divi theme builder. And using the Divi library is a major time saver. So I click add global footer and build global footer. And we are building this one from scratch. Okay, so let's have a look at the design. We have one column here and we have two smaller columns here. So this is the row structure we are looking for. And uh, the first thing we have to the left is an image. So I'll insert an image module. And we click the image and we will end up in our media library where we can find our logo. And there it is. So I will upload that image or insert it. And before we exit this one, I will click uh, the link tab and I will simply enter a slash, a shift seven, and this will be a link to our homepage. Okay, so let's add our background color so the logo will be visible. So I click the cogwheel in the section settings and I click background and I choose the dark gray 1C1C1C. And now it looks a little bit better already. So we head back and here we have our uh, boilerplate. So I'll copy that text and uh, let's insert a text module below this image module. And I search for text and click the text module. And in here I will paste the text. But one uh, tip here is that you can click this icon. It's a T. Uh, before you paste text because now you will uh, paste the text in plain text mode so you will not get any formats if you paste text from word or an email or a pdf so now it's safe to paste the text content without any uh, unwanted code or formats getting uh, in the way good uh, i think this text is a little bit dark and hard to read and it's also a little bit small so we head into the design tab of the text module and hit the text tab and uh, let's start with the font first i want to use carla as we did before and uh, i would also like this one to be white and i would like it to be 18 pixels so now it's a bit more easy to read good and uh, then we have the social media icons. So we'll click the plus sign. 
we have it. And instead of recreating the social media icons as we did in the header, I will click add from library. And uh, there we have our social media layout from the div library. So I'll click it and it's inserted. So this is an awesome time saver. I really recommend you to, to save things in the div library to recycle them. Okay, so we're finished with uh, the left or the first column. So let's go to column number two. And uh, here we have the shortcuts and the contact us columns. So I'll insert another text module. And uh, we add the title shortcuts. And I want it to be a heading three. And let's go to the design tab to style the heading. So I click the, click the heading tab and I choose the heading three. So we're going to introduce a new font and it's called Cormorant Garamond. I wish I choose a font that I could pronounce, but I guess it's too late now. So this is a nice serif font and uh, I will make it white and uh, probably a bit bigger. Maybe not that big. Yeah, something like that. Perfect. We close that one and uh, I could actually copy this one by hovering it and press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC. And I can hover this column and press Command V on Mac or Control V at PC to paste it. So this is also a really quick way to recycle content. And now I just change the text to contact us and we have our two headings. Okay, so the next step is to create this divider line, the golden one. So I'll insert a new module below the text module and I search for divider and there we have it. And this is a really nice and simple uh, module. It's just a line like this, but you can style it pretty much however you want to have it. So I go to the design tab and the line settings. And the line color, color should be gold and it should be solid. I can use like dashed or dotted and do lots of nice uh, design settings here. But I go for a solid line and the line position should be centered. And the sizing, I will add a little bit of weight. So I think two pixels could be nice. Good. And uh, I will move it in a jiffy. I will just add the links below first. So we'll add these shortcuts, home about us, news and contact us. I could actually copy this text to save some time. And uh, I'll insert a text module. I will click the paste as text icon. And let's paste it. Here we go. And uh, I'll make sure that we have real spaces because we are going to do a bullet list. So I will um, mark these lines and I will click the unnumbered bullet list icon. And there we have a bullet list. Okay, so I will start by creating the links. So we are linking to the home page. So front slash, just the uh, a shift seven there and uh, about us page click the link icon and we type about us so i don't need to type the whole domain url before this is like local links so it works fine just like that we have the news page just slash news oops could also choose to open in a new window here, but I want to have it in the same tab or same window. And we have the contact us page. So the URL is contact hyphen us. Good, so let's change the colors. We want the bullets to be golden and the links to be white. And when we hover, we want the golden hover effect. So I can actually take a shortcut here by hovering and clicking the icon here. And I will jump directly to the styling settings for that. 
element. So here I can style the links. So I want the link text color to be white and I want them to be golden when I hover. So let's activate the hover settings, activate hover mode and click the gold color. There we go. So here we have the idle mode and here we have the hover mode. Okay, so let's style the bullet list. That's this icon here. And uh, I want to use the font Carla, of course. And uh, I would like to have square bullets. So here we have disks as default. I could add, add circles, but I want to use the square ones. And I want them to be in gold. So there we go. And uh, close this one. So now we have our white links with our golden bullets. And uh, I will also change the text size here to 16. There we go. Okay, so now I can also style this spacing here, which is a little bit too big. So I will just grab it here and drag. And I will do the same on the bottom. So I think that looks pretty nice. So now I can just copy this divider with the command C and I will paste it below. Okay, yeah, so I changed the spacing in regards to the text, uh, uh, text module. So then I can right click this one and I can choose copy module styles. And I can right click this one and choose paste module styles. So now I have recycled the styling settings from this module to this one. So that's also a great time saver. Uh, and now I can copy this one. I can also right click here and choose copy module. And I can go here and I can right click and choose paste module. And there we go. So now we are creating these contact informations. So I will copy that text. I will go back and uh, I will paste it. So let's delete this, activate paste as text mode and paste it. And I will click enter in here just to make sure that we have real paragraphs. Uh, otherwise the bullet list will not work. So there we have a new bullet list. And as you can see, we have the correct um, formats with the square bullets etc since we just copy this one so the design settings applies so the email address uh, gets linked automatically we can see that it's mail to colon and then the email address so that's nice then we have a phone number and i'm going to show you show you how to make a click to call link uh, this is especially nice for people using smartphones so they can just click the phone number and then they will call you so we uh, mark this one and click the link icon and the URL instead of mail to I will type tell and colon and then I will paste the phone number I will remove the plus and I will remove the spaces just to make sure that it will work in all mobile uh, OS's and uh, this is how you make a click to call link really simple there we go and uh, we also have a um, address so uh, we could link to maybe google maps or something there so i will just enter a um, bracket in there just like a temporary link and uh, you could also link to zoom or whatsapp or, or your facebook or, or whatever you use so let's just add a bracket there as well nice so there, there we have our um, the first part of uh, our footer. We should also add this little line here, this divider between the footer and the bottom bar. So let's go back and uh, I will mark, let's see there. Okay, yeah, it's not full width. So um, let's mark this section and we go to the design tab and we click border. And we're going to add a bottom border to this um, section, sorry, to this row. So we click this one, marking the bottom border, and uh, we'll make it 
one pixel or uh, two pixels looks good. And uh, choose the 666. No, that's too light. I'll go for the 333 color. So that's look that looks really nice. Okay, so mobile optimizing, of course. So we could click the different devices here to style it, but I could also click Command Plus to go to go to the right. So there we go to the tablet and then to the mobile. And if I choose Command Minus or Control Minus on PC, I will go to the left. So we go to the tablet or to the desktop or the zoomed out mode. So that's shortcuts for for the keyboard to switch uh, which device you're previewing. So I click Command Plus and we are in the tablet view. And uh, I think this looks pretty good in tablet, but I will increase the spacing between the social media icons and uh, this part. So I will go to the social media icon module, the design tab and spacing. And I will add some margin in the bottom. But first I will click the device for the responsive editing and make sure that tablet is marked. And then in bottom, I will add maybe 50 pixels, a little bit too much, 40. Yeah, I think that looks pretty neat. So I'm happy with that. So let's go to the smartphone view. And that looks pretty good too. I think I would like to actually center a line a little bit of this content maybe even do that for the tablet view so let's go back there okay i want to center line this image and this text and this social media icons but only on tablet and mobile so i'll go to the image module first and click the um, cogwheel i go to design alignment and then i choose to center align the image in tablet there we go. And this value will be inherited to the smartphone, as you can see. And uh, I go back to the tablet mode and I will center align this text module in the same way. I go to the design tab, text, and let's scroll down and choose text alignment. And first of all, I have to make sure that tablet, tablet is marked, is active. There we go. And then I will do the same for the social media icons. Design, alignment, responsive mode, tablet, and center line. Yeah, this is a fine footer. So let's save it. So now we are going to add a bottom bar with copyright information and uh, displaying the current year uh, dynamically using the Divi Builder's dynamic content feature. So you don't have to sit up and wait uh, at New Year's Eve every time and just open your laptop and go in and update your website. I think it looks a bit crappy on sites where you, it, it says like copyright 2018, then the, the website doesn't feel really updated. So let's go back to the theme builder and uh, I will add another row by clicking the green plus sign. And this time we want to have two columns. And to the left, we are adding a text module. So this is the text that I want to use. Copyright and the copyright sign 2021 and the company name. So Sometimes it's a bit hard to find this copyright symbol. Sometimes I Google for it uh, and copy and paste it because I, I never learned the short command for doing it. But I found actually a better way in Divi. So I can mark this text and uh, just delete it. And there's a little icon here uh, for special uh, characters. So if I click that one, you can see a list of special characters. And there we have the copyright sign. So I take this one and I can just take command C or command X to cut it out. So now it's it's I can paste it later. So um, I will begin by clicking this icon, which is use dynamic content. So this is perfect for adding, for example, dynamic dates or, or the current year. And uh, I want to choose current date. So let's click that one. 
So before the current date, I want the text to be copyright. And then I want to have the copyright character. So I just press command V to paste it. There we have it. And then I have a space again. The date format. Now it's June 14, 2021, which happens to be the current date. But I just want to display the current year. So let's click this one. And uh, you have a few different date formats to choose from, but nothing to choose the current year, which I think is a little bit strange. Elegant themes, you should have included that, but uh, luckily there is a solution. So I will click custom. And uh, the code for current year is a big Y. So now we can see that it's copyright, copyright sign 2021. And uh, we can say maybe create ink, for example, after. So um, there we go, our dynamic text. And of course, we want it to look a little bit uh, better, more better readability. So I go to the design tab and text, and I choose white. I choose my font, which is Carla. And I choose the font size, size 16. Um, actually, I can see that there's a space missing there. So we go back to the content tab to the text and then we can edit this dynamic content by clicking the cogwheel and uh, so here before the last text which is this one i'll add just a space so i hit the space button and now it looks better perfect so the last part in our bottom bar is to add a link to the privacy policy to the right i will actually copy this text module and I will drag it and paste it there. So I have the right font. I will open it. Now we can delete the dynamic content. And I can just type privacy policy. And uh, let's link it. So I click the link icon. And the URL is privacy hyphen policy. And I want it to open in a new tab. So I'll click this one that says new window. Okay, we can see that the link is blue. I want to change that. So I just click the pencil to go directly to the design settings for links. And uh, let's make it white. And when you hover it, I want it to be golden. So I click the hover icon and enter the hover mode and click the gold color. There we go, idle and hover. Okay, I want it to be right aligned. So let's go to the text settings. And in the text tab, I can choose right aligned. And now we have it in the right place. So let's make a final look in the tablet mode. And here we can see that it's breaking down to two columns placed on top of each other in a responsive mode. And uh, then it doesn't look too good when this one is right aligned and this one is left aligned. And I think it's the same for the smartphone view. Yeah, it is. So let's fix that. Uh, I go to the tablet mode again. There we go. And uh, I edit the first text module by clicking the cogwheel. I go to the design tab, text. And let's center line this one in mobile. So I click the responsive uh, design icon. Make sure the tablet, tablet is selected. And then I center line it. And this will be inherited to the smartphone as well. And let's do the same thing for the last one. We go to the cogwheel, design, text, and the alignment, which is right aligned. And we go to the responsive editing for the tablet mode. And I click center align. And I click save. So that's how we create a global footer that will be applied everywhere. I guess I should actually reduce some of the spacing here. So I will do it like that. Just to have it a little bit tighter in the bottom. Okay, so we save. And we exit. We click save changes since this was the first time we did edit the global footer. And we can actually preview it live on our website. So we have our global header and we scroll down. And there we have our global footer. 
and we have the copyright 2021 with the dynamic current year. The homepage is a great way for you to make a nice first impression for your visitors. And the first thing they see is probably this hero area. So we're going to put a little bit of extra effort into this, making it beautiful. So we have this nice background image with an overlay. We add a divider shape to the bottom. We have this big heading and these two call to action buttons. If we scroll down, you can see three blurbs with a nice hover effect that makes them lift from the surface on hover. We have a classic image to the left, text and button to the right area. We have a client or a custom slider with testimonials. And here we show the three latest news in a blog grid that is fetched dynamically and up updated automatically when you add a post. Here we have a, a nice call to action area with a dark subtle background. We are bragging a little bit about our clients, showing their logos. And uh, just before the header we add a full width image. So that's it. Let's head back to our development site and build this one. So we can go to the home page and just click enable visual builder. And now we can delete this temporary content that we added before. So I just click the trash can. Okay, so we're adding the first part of content here. And that will be a row with a single column. And uh, I will add some text for this heading. So before we do anything, I'm going to add the background image. So I will click the cogwheel in the section and we go to background. And first of all, I will choose background image by clicking the icon and add a background image. And uh, here we go. There is our background image and we can see it immediately on the page. So it's a little bit light at the moment and of course it's too small so we will fix all that. So we start by fixing the overlay so the white text will be easier to read. So in order to do that I will first change the image background blend from normal to multiply. Then I will go to the background color and add a black background color. Okay, so to make this a little bit transparent, I will click it and I will drag this bar to increase the um, transparency, change the opacity. So this looks pretty nice, I think. And uh, we can click save changes for now. So let's go back to this text module and click the cogwheel. So first of all, let's uh, enter the text for your heading in the hero area. So I'll type create your and then I make a shift enter to make a small spacing. And I type own website or highlight it and choose a heading one. So this is our main heading. I can actually click now the pen or the pencil to go to the design settings for my heading one. So we'll change the font to Cormorant Garamond. We should also center align it. So this is the design that we are going for. And uh, we should of course make it lighter or white. And now we want to make it bigger, way, way bigger. I think we'll go for maybe a hundred pixels. And then we can actually increase the line height a little bit. Maybe 1.1. Yeah, we can save it for now. We can now add the icon that's going to be above the heading. So I click and I click the plus sign and I will add an image module. 
I click the image to choose something from my media library. And uh, we can take this one. And uh, to center line it, I will click Design, Alignment and Center. And uh, I will just drag it to the top. So now it's in the right place. And now we'll add this text below the heading. So we'll click and I will click the plus sign and add a new text module. And uh, I can actually paste this text just to save some time. I'll do it here. And I will just click the paste as text icon. Oops. There we go. And uh, I'll go to the design tab to style this. I click text. And uh, I want the text font Carla. And uh, I want it to be maybe 18 pixels. And uh, I want it to be center aligned. And I want it to be not white, but light, light gray. But it's way too wide. I want to have some line breaks in here. Let's go into the sizing settings for this module down here. And I can set a max width of maybe 700 pixels. It starts to look a little bit better, but now it jumped out to the left because I set a max width. So then I have to set the module alignment to center. It looks pretty good, but I would like to add some extra line height here. You should never fear the white space. It makes it easier to read. So let's go to the text settings and maybe change that to 1.5, maybe something like that. I uh, think that looks pretty good. And we could actually decrease the spacing here to make it look a little bit better. So the next step is to add our two buttons. So I'll click here to add a new row. And this row should have two columns, one for each button. And I will add a button module. And the first one should say read more. And uh, you could link to somewhere in the your website by clicking use dynamic content and page link. And then you can browse your different pages here. I can link to the about us page here, for example. And uh, let's go to the design tab. So the alignment, I want it to be right aligned. And of course, this button should be left aligned, so they will be put in center. And uh, we can skip the text settings for now and go to the button. And I want to use custom styles for this button. And uh, styling buttons in Divi is pretty straightforward. We go to the button tab and we want to use custom styles for buttons. So we change the text size to 15 pixels. We change the text color to white and you can see it in real time how the design is updated. We will change the background color from transparent to gold. And uh, the button border width, we can keep two pixels, but we will change the color from white to gold. The button border radius is three pixels by default. That's what's creating this little bit rounded effect. If we add 50, we have a very round button. It looks nice, but since we are using a little bit more sharp, minimalistic design, I will set the border radius to zero. The button letter spacing will add two pixels between each letter. We use the button font Carla. And the font weight should be bold because we want the buttons to really stand out. And I'll add all caps to the button. We want to have a button icon on hover like this. And we use the default icon, which is this one, but you could change it here if you want to. And uh, we only, ah, let's see, we want the button icon to be white. And we want it to be placed to the right. And we only want it to be displayed on hover like this. If we would turn this one off, it would always be displayed like that. And we can see that it's a little bit tight here inside the button. We uh, It's a bit jumpy when you hover, so we want to change that by adding some padding. 
So I scroll down and I choose spacing. And we'll add a top and bottom padding first. Let's say around 10, 12 pixels. And I click this icon to have the same top and bottom padding. And the left and right is what will add some more spacing for our icon inside there. So now if I hover, you can see that this icon fits in the button and we don't have this jumping effect. So now it looks really nice. So we are going to create a lot of buttons on this website. We love buttons uh, and we don't want to choose the font and the board radius and stuff all the time that we create a button every time. So we are going to create a global preset for this so we can just have a template to insert each time. And uh, to do that, I will simply right click up here in the purple bar and I will say that I want to apply this style to my active preset. And yes, I am sure that I want this to be used for all buttons on the entire website. So now these settings are gray. And if I want to edit them, I can click here in the presets tab and I can go to the default presets for buttons and click the pen. And then you have this a little bit more metallic color and we can go here and change, for example, the button text size for all buttons. So this is a really nice time saver and we're going to do this for text modules and, and other modules throughout this website in order to make it look professional. So if you want to create a new button here, I just click the plus sign in this column number two and I want to choose a, a button module and I click it. And then we can see that it all, already is pre-designed because we have our default preset. But we want to make some changes to this button. But first, let us change the content by saying contact us. And in the link field, we click dynamic content, page link. And we actually got this suggestion. I don't know if it was just random or if it <laughs> understood that that was what we were looking for. Okay, so that was the content. And now we want to change the styling. So we have this ghost button look with just the white outline. So we're going to the button settings. And this is also something really nice with the global presets that you can override them in specific modules or sections or rows. So um, if I want to have another, for example, background color, transparent, I can just choose that in this module and the global default will be overridden. I also want to change the border color to white. And there we have it, our second button. And maybe I want to save this preset so I can choose when I create a button if I want to have the gold button or the ghost button. So let's do that by clicking the presets tab. And uh, I want to create a new preset from the current styles that I just created. And we can call it a white button. And I don't want this one to be default. I want the gold button to be my standard button when I create a new one. So I have to choose the white button when I create it. So we click the green save changes button. We click it again for the global settings. And now I can choose if I want to use the gold button, which have a star, meaning that it is our default. Or if I want to use a white button. So this is a great time saver. We have one more setting to do, and that's to move this one to the right. We want to right align this button. So I hit the design tab and alignment, and I will set it to right aligned. And now it starts to look something like this, but I want to have it slightly tighter together. You see that this spacing is kind of big. So I can achieve this by closing the button settings and go to the row settings by clicking the cogwheel and we go to design sizing and use custom gutter width and uh, if i increase it you can see that the spacing increases inside of this row and if i decrease it stuff will be tighter so if i just have one it will be zero padding or zero space in between and two it will be a little bit tighter than the default which is the number three so we'll go for the number two there. I think this looks really nice. 
So we have a nice starting point here with our hero area. So I will uh, save this by hitting Command S to save or uh, Control S to save on a Windows computer. We have a few more settings to do for our hero area. We want to add a little bit more padding and we want to add this divider effect. So let's start with the divider effect. So we click the section, cogwheel, and we go to the design tab. And there we open the dividers tab. And we want to add a divider to the bottom. So let's click the bottom tab. And here you can add lots of beautiful divider styles. You can uh, use some <laughs> clouds, maybe. Uh, you have some uh, kind of uh, flippy uh, dividers like this. But we're going for, let's see where we have that. This one, I think. No, this one is what I'm looking for. And there we go. Yep, that's the right one. And uh, now we want to also add some padding to have some more spacing in this uh, hero area. So in the design tab, I browse down to spacing and we have our padding top and bottom. So I'll add a hundred pixels to my top padding. And since I have this divider down here, I'll add some extra, like 150. Let's go on and create our three blurbs, which are those boxes. So by doing that, I'm going to add a new section. We add a regular section and we want to have a row with three columns, one for each blurb. And we are looking for the blurb module. And this is how it looks like by default. And uh, we can start by adding our text, the perfect feeling as a heading. And then we have some lorem ipsum text. The perfect feeling. Let's add some text here. There we go. We can choose here if it should be an image, and then we can choose an image from our image library, or if we want to use some of the default Divi icons in the Divi library. But we'll use our own icon this time, so I'll click the image. Let's have a look in our media library. We could, for example, choose this one. Okay, looks pretty nice. Let's go to the design tab. Let's browse down to our text which should be centered align like that. And uh, now I can click the header or the heading. And we see that this is a heading four. And uh, I want to add the title font, which is, which is Cormorant Garamond. And uh, I want to increase it in size. Just drag there a bit. So maybe something like that. We can then style the body text. That should be Carla. There we have that one. And we can change that one to maybe 16. Looks nice. So um, you can see that we have a shadow. They do also overlap the hero area. So let's do the settings for that. So we can start by adding the box shadow. And that's also under the design tab. And we go down to box shadow. And uh, I'll use this one. So there are a few predefined, nice looking uh, drop shadows here. We'll actually add the hover effect when we are in the box shadow settings, because as you can see, the shadow will spread a little bit and it will also lift when hovered. We need to click the hover icon and activate hover mode before we make the change to only apply it in hover. So this is how it looks in hover and this is how it looks in idle. And uh, let's lift this one up. So we are going to use a ne negative margin. So we can first of all remove this unnecessary padding in our um, section and row. And now we can go in the settings for the blurb, go to design and uh, spacing. And now we're going to use something called negative margin. So if I add a positive margin, we are pushing it down. 
but if I add a negative margin, we will lift it up. So I can also drag this one to save some time. And we go here. And you can see that it's not really looking perfect because it's transparent. So we will fix that by going to content, background, and add a white background to our blurb. Starting to look pretty nice, but we want to add some padding inside here. So I go to the design tab and spacing. And uh, we will add some padding, maybe 30, 40, top, bottom, and left and right. Looks really nice, I think. And then we had the other hover effect that was the lifting. So you can see that it lifts a little bit up when I hover. So to achieve that, we will go into the blurb settings and uh, design and transform. And I will use the second setting, which is transform translate. And this is a really nice one. I can move objects around freely like this. But let's reset that. So I just want it to be lifted up a little bit. So I will click this chain icon. So we want to connect the Y and the X axis. So I can just lift it up a little bit like that. So we set zero on idle. And then we click the hover icon to active hover mode. And I click hover. And on hover, I want it to maybe go up like 10 pixels, making it really subtle. We don't want the visitors to be seasick when, when uh, browsing our website. So this is how it will look on idle. And this is how it will look on hover. Okay, we don't want to do all this again. So I will just click this blurb and I will duplicate it once and twice. And then I will simply drag and drop the blurb into the right position. And I will do that once more. And now I can just change the content in the blurbs by clicking the cogwheel and uh, I can change the headings, for example, or I can go down to image and icon and just change my icon to something else. So there's one more thing that we need to do with these uh, blurbs before we are finished. And that's the spacing or the gutter width. As you can see, they are pretty close together. And uh, here there's a bigger gap. So we'll fix that by going in the row settings, clicking the cog cogwheel. We go to design, sizing, and use custom gutter width. And we decrease it to a two to have this spacing and they can take up a little bit more width as well. So let's click exit visual builder and we click save and exit. And now we can preview the result. So we have our nice header. We have our hero area with our beautiful buttons. And we have our blurbs with the shadow. And if we hover it, you will have a really nice hover effect. Okay, so we enable the visual builder. And uh, the next step is to create this image and text and button area. And we are actually going to set some uh, global presets for our fonts in the text module as well. So we don't have to uh, uh, set the header heading font or the body text font. So let's create a new section. And we are going to create a row with two equally sized columns. So to the left, we are going to have a, an image. So we choose an image module and we click the image. And uh, we will use these stairs. So that's pretty simple. So that was uh, column number one. Column number two, we'll add a text module. Okay, so I'll actually paste this text to save some time. We go back and I will click the paste as text icon and we'll paste it. You can actually type this in non capital letters and we'll have proper line breaks. There we go. Okay, so this is a uh, heading four that I have styled in a global preset. This is a heading two, 
And this is bold body copy, and this is regular body copy. So let's make this one an H4, heading 4. This one is a heading 2. And this one we will simply make it bold by uh, highlighting it and clicking the B icon. Okay, so let's style these formats. We click the first heading 4 to edit that. And uh, I want this to be a Carla font. So we click that one. I want it to be golden, like that. And uh, the sizing, it should be pretty small. So I will set 12 pixels. And it should be all caps. So we'll click the all caps icon. And we'll also make it bold, like that. And uh, let's add some letter spacing. Maybe one pixel will do. So there we go. I will also add uh, one and a half EM in line height. We have the heading 2. We'll choose our font Cormorant Garamond for that one. And uh, we will choose the color 333 3, 3 for those headings. And for the text size, I'll add 42 pixels. And for the line height, 1.1. We have the body copy, so I'll choose that one. And um, we will change that to Carla, like that. And the font size, I think 14 is way too small. So we'll change that to 17 maybe. But it's a little bit too tight, we need more line height. So let's change that to maybe... 1.5 em and now we're going to save this as a preset so we will then automatically save our h4 our h2 and our body copy i just right click here in the purple bar and i say apply styles to active presets all our text modules will inherit this styling and uh, while we add it we can actually add some more formats so let's say that we will add a link maybe here click the link tool just add something there as a url and now it's blue i want to change that to gold like that and let's say that we want a subheader uh, an h3 header so we add a spacing here and we have a heading three so this was a heading two this was a heading four and this will be a heading 3. So we change it to a heading 3. And we go to the design tab. We can actually click the pencil here to go directly. Shortcut. And uh, I will make this slightly different. I will choose that we should have Cormand Garamond. But it should be bold. The sizing should be maybe 25 pixels. Like that. And maybe 1.2 or 1.3, like that looks good. So now we have a heading 3. So this is kind of a style guide for us. So um, I can actually just right click the toolbar here and say apply styles to active presets. So we'll add the new styles to our text module. And then we'll add a button below. There we go. And we already made a global preset. So you can see now how we save time for each time we add these presets. Everything goes very much quicker. So the, it's, it's a, uh, it takes some time in the, in the start, but then it just moves on faster and faster when you design with Divi. So let's save that one. And we actually finished with our image and text section. So we click here to add a new section. And what are we going for here? Yeah, we are going for this uh, testimonial slider with this quotation mark. We have some uh, italic text. We have the name of the client and we have those um, icons to change the slide. So this is one row with one column and we want to add a slider. This one, just a slider. 
Okay, and uh, we got two sliders by default. We can add more if we want to. So let's head into the first one. And uh, we can actually paste some text here. We have, uh, oops, the lorem ipsum text. I have to be quick. And we'll paste that in the body copy. And I'll click the paste as text icon and, oops, paste it. I will actually remove the title. We will not use the title. Uh, we will have the uh, quotation mark there. And we will not have a button either. So I'll just remove the button text and the button will disappear. So there we go. Yeah. And uh, we could actually change the background color. We want to use this dark gray. There we go. And uh, I will exit the slider settings. And I will go to the section settings and add the same background color. There we go. So now we have this big slider area. Let's go back to the slider module and click the cogwheel. And uh, let's head into the slide settings of the first slide. So we can begin by adding our quotation mark. So I hit enter and uh, I will add media. And uh, I will add this image. I actually included a light gray quotation uh, image in the zip file with the images find in uh, below this video or at divimundo.com where you can download all these images and use them for yourself. So if you use a different design, you can use these light gray marks, but I'll go for the golden one. So I'll select it and now I want to style this text. So uh, I will mark it here. And I will make it italic. And I will then click the design tab. And I will go to the body text. And uh, I want it to be pretty, pretty big. Maybe something like this. And then we need to change the line height. And then we have some other settings. For example, we have the uh, navigation, the arrow color. And we'll make that one gold and the dot navigation we will make that one gold as well let's go to the content and now we want to add the name of the client below the text so we are going to try some inline css for this so let's say john do and uh, we highlight it and we are going to change the color by clicking this text color icon and uh, just make it pink right now and then we'll hit the text tab so now i will show you how to edit the html and add some inline css in the editor and here we can see that we have a span tag saying that the color is ff00ff that's our pink color so i will add our gold color here instead there we go looks better and uh, I will actually add some code here because we want the font size to be 12 pixels and we don't want it to be italic. So I'll just remove these tags that happen to end up there. Maybe we want to add font weight bold. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. So let's head back and uh, instead of creating a brand new slide, I'm just going to delete the pre-made default slide and I'm going to duplicate this one. And now we can edit it and we can just change the text and change the name. Let's say Jane Doe there, for example. We could also change the names by going into the cogwheel. And in the bottom, we have admin label, and I can call this one John Doe. And if I go back, I see that this slide is called John Doe. And we go to the next slider, and I can call this Jane Doe. And it's easier to find them. When you come back, you might have like 10 or 15 slides here. We have some final settings for the sliding movement. Let's go to design and animation. Automatic animation should be turned on. So we want the slider to go on by itself. The speed is now seven seconds or 7,000 milliseconds. 
and we can maybe choose 5000 milliseconds to, to make it slide a little bit quicker. And now we also see our sliding icons here. I want the slide to continue when someone hover the mouse over. Okay, so that was our slider. Let's add the next section. So I'll start by adding one row and we'll have text module. I'll type latest news and don't miss a thing. And I'm happy that we created the global presets before because now I can just choose a H4 and then we have the correct format and I can use an H2 for this one and we'll have the correct format. So now I just go to the design tab and text and I want those to be center aligned. And now we'll add a new row with one column. So as you can see, we have three columns in this blog grid, but it's still just a one column row because we'll insert a blog module, which includes three columns per default. So we'll add the blog module. And this is a dynamic module that will list posts or if you have other post formats or custom post types in WordPress, and it will dynamically uh, list the, the latest posts. So if I publish a new post, it will be displayed here on the uh, start page or the home page. So I want to show display the three latest news. So we'll add three instead of 10. And I want all categories to be visible. So uh, if I don't choose anything here, it will display all categories. You can choose if you want to show the excerpt and that's the preview text here and we can change the length of the excerpt. But let's head to the design tab before we do anything else. And we'll change the layout because we don't want this full width layout, we want a grid layout. So I will change it to grid. So let's go back to content and uh, we can actually change the excerpt length. It's a little bit too much text here, I think, to maybe 120. And do under elements, I want to show the featured image. I want to show the read more button, which actually is a read more text to be more precise. I don't need to show the author. I want to see the published date, so that's fine. I want to see the category of the post, but I have no comments, so no comment count. I want to see the excerpt, but I don't want to show the pagination on this page. I just want the last latest three news like this. Okay, let's go into the design tab to style it so it looks just like this. Overlay. We can add an overlay, so let's turn that on. I want the, the image to be a bit transparent when hovered. So the icon color, I can set to fully transparent, so there will be no icon visible. But the overlay background color, I will choose white, and then I will click the palette and I will drag it down so it will be have a little bit of opacity, maybe something like that. And I actually can't see it now when I hover, so we will have to look at it in front end in a minute. We can style the image, but we don't need to do that now. But the text we want to edit. So let's start with the title text. So let's choose that one. And let's increase the size. And can add some line height. Maybe like that. And then we have this text. The metadata. And with the date and the categories. I want that one to be gold. I want to use the Carla font. I want it to be in all caps. And I want it to be maybe 12 pixels. Let's make it bold as well. It will look good. There we go. And then we'll change this preview text or the excerpt. And I want it to be a bit lighter. And I want it to be maybe... Ah, let's set the font first. Carla, of course. Even a bit bigger. Maybe 15. Okay, looks good. And we have this color and we want to change the read more button or read more text. So I want this one to be golden and centered and all caps and also some uh, space in between letters, I think. So we have the read more text. I want that one to be Carla. 
I want it to be bold, all caps. I want it to be gold. And um, how about the sizing? Maybe that could be 14. We could add some spacing in there. Maybe even two pixels of letter spacing. And uh, it's kind of tight here, I think. I would like to add some spacing. Oops. But there's no really good setting for this in the DV blog mod module. So we'll have to do a little hack. We'll uh, use a read more line height and just add lots of that. We'll actually add maybe 5 EM. So uh, this is maybe not the proper way of doing things. But um, since there will be no line breaks in this text, I think this is kind of an okay trick to add some more spacing in this blog module. And now we want to center align this, read more text. And we actually want to center align all text in the blog module, as you can see here. So we'll do that by going to text and adding a text alignment center for all text. Perfect. Now I want to get rid of this frame of this border. So we go to the border styles. And it has by default a one pixel border. So I'll just drag that down to zero. And now I want to add some um, box shadowing to make it a little bit boxed in because now it's just floating in this space. So I go to box shadow and I add the same box shadow as we used on the blurbs. So now they look really nice. And I actually want to use the hover effect that we used on the blurbs as well. So I go to box shadow blur strength. I click the hover icon and we activate hover mode and I just ramp this up to the top 80 pixels on hover. So here we have the idle and here we have the hover mode. Okay, I think the spacing here is a little bit too wide. I have to exit the blog module now and I go into the row settings, click the cogwheel, I go to design, sizing, use custom gather width, you recognize this from before. And we drag it down to two. So now we have a little bit less space in there. If you want to, you could just add like a button module uh, to all news. Picking all news. You could link it to your news page by clicking the dynamic content icon. Choose page link. And we will choose news. And then we could center align this button like that. We have this call to action area and this is a quick one. So we add a new section and it's a regular one and it's a simple one column row. We can start by adding some text. And let's see, do you want to create something beautiful with us? Of course we do. So let's paste that one like that. Uh, let's go to the design settings text and we want to center align it. We actually want to go to content text and we'll use a heading two for this one. Okay. So before we do anything else, let's set the background in the section because when we do this text white, it will be invisible in the white background. So we go to the section settings by clicking the cogwheel and background and we'll add a background image. And let's see. There's a lonely guy sitting in the office, I think. So do we have that one? Ah, there it is. So we add this, that as a background image. And now we want to make it really dark. So we'll go to, we browse down, background image blend, and we set multiply. We'll go to background color. You recognize this from the hero area. We choose black. We click the color and we open up some opacity like that. Maybe even less, we'll want to make the image really subtle. Okay, that's nice. Let's open up the settings for the text module again. And we go to design, heading text and heading two, which is the format that we are using. And we have the nice global uh, presets for that one, but we want this one to be white like that. And also, we don't want it to take up all this space. So we'll go into the design tab and uh, sizing. 
and then we could change the maximum width of this module to maybe 700 and uh, we set the module alignment to center like that looks fine and um, yeah i think that's it for the text and we'll add this icon up there and this button down there so let's click there and we'll add an image module and uh, the icon it's the houses it's that one we'll upload it we go to the design tab alignment and center line it we'll grab it and drop it on top of the heading and now we'll add the button below the heading so i click the plus sign and we'll add a button module and uh, i click design alignment and center and of course in the content um, tab i can change the text and the link but i'll let it be like this so now i just want to make this a little bit bigger so i'll click here and i'll just drag 126 pixels and let's set the same maybe 150 even just to make it really big and nice okay so there's our call to action area and uh, after that we have our client logos with a nice hover effect so let's jump into that and we'll actually recycle some content here because we are doing this so i'll just take this um, row right click it and choose copy row and then i'll click here to add a new section and i will close this one and i will right click and i will paste row so that's a really quick way to recycle content and we have top of the line oops kind line our clients and now i'll add a new row and uh, we'll add actually six logos so i'll have six columns in this row and i'll add an image module and i'll click the image and i'll choose one of my logos and i will upload it there we go and now i want to create this nice hover effect it should be darker when hovered so we are going to use something that's called filters in a divi so i go to the design tab and i go to filters and we have brightness so i click the hover icon and click the hover mode and I will decrease the brightness on hover to zero, so it will be darker. I could also use lots of different features since it's black and white. I, I won't see too much difference here, but this is something we're going to use later on the About Us page. So this is one way of using it. So this is the idle mode and this is the hover mode. Okay, and uh, I'll actually set the alignment to center just to make sure that it looks good in all uh, screen sizes and uh, yeah i'm happy with that so now i'm going to copy this one by hitting command c or control c on my keyboard and i'm going to paste it paste it paste it paste it and paste it and now i'll click and click the cogwheel to just change the logo so this is a really quick process and i choose another one and i'll do the same again so when you are getting up to speed with divi you can really build websites really quickly by using these uh, tricks okay and we'll change the two last logos as well and the last one nice and uh, maybe a final change because we can see that those are a little bit tighter together and yes you guessed it right it's the good old gutter width so i'll open the settings for the row by clicking the cogwheel and i go to design sizing use custom gutter width and i'll drag it down 
to two. So we have the last part and that's an easy one. It's this full width image. So that's, let's add that one. So I'll actually add a new section, a regular one, and we'll have one single row with a single column. And we'll add an image module. And I'll choose an image from my media, li media library. And uh, there we have that one. Okay, so it's not really the result that we were looking for. So we have to change some design settings. So I go to the design tab. I'll change the sizing and I could actually choose force full width, but it won't change anything. And that's because the row is restricted here. So I'll go into the row settings. I click the cogwheel and go to design sizing. And I want to have a hundred percent width. And I want to change the max width from 1200 pixels to hundred percent. So let's move this one. So now we're talking looks far better. So we just have this white space here that we want to get rid of. So let's drag that one and that padding of the section. And uh, there we go. We have the full width image. And we can actually add a nice uh, animation effect here. So if I click the cogwheel and design, I can choose animation. And let's hit that one. So we can make this slide upwards, uh, like it grows up from the footer. So we choose slide. And we want the direction not to be center, but up like that. And uh, I want a little bit more subtle, subtle uh, animation, animation, uh, not that fast. So let's bring it down to seven. That looks a little bit more nice, I think. And I want the starting opacity to be 100%, so it's visible from start. So let's enable the visual builder and dig deeper into the responsive editing of Divi. And it's really powerful. So the first thing I do is I open this menu and then I can preview it in the smartphone view or the tablet view. A nice uh, trick you can do is that you can open this menu and uh, set a specific phone model as your default preview mode. So if I choose my iPhone X, I can click make default phone view. And now every time I click this icon, it will be displayed as an iPhone. And you can also add a custom value here, like 320 pixels, if you want to preview it in a really, really tiny smartphone. You can also flip it if you want to see how it looks like in uh, horizontal or vertical mode. So here are some nice tools for responsive editing. Uh, another trick that I do or a method is that I often start with the tablet design before I do my uh, editing in mobile. And the reason for that is that the values that I use for tablet will be inherited to the smartphone design by default. So maybe 80% of the values that I use for smart or for tablet will work fine on a smartphone as well. So then I don't have to do them twice. So when I go and do my mobile editing, uh, I'll just have to do some fine tuning. And let's start by reducing the heading one size for the smaller screens. So we enter the design settings for the text module go to the design tab and heading text and this is our heading one so we have 100 pixels for desktop and we can drop that one down to maybe 80 pixels in tablet and uh, in the small phone screen we can actually go down to maybe 40 so i think that looks pretty nice and uh, we can also have a look at this text below the heading we go to the design tab and this is regular text and we click the responsive editing tool so we can take it down to 17 in tablet and in phone let's go for 16 and then we could actually reduce the line height as well so we go down to maybe 1.4 em in line height for mobile okay we have the buttons and um 
this is because Divi is responsive. It will stack the columns on top of each other if you have more than one column. So that's good most of the times, but in this case it looks kind of weird. So I'm actually going to hide the second button for tablet and mobile. So the hero area won't be that stacked or that messy. So I can do that by taking this button, clicking the cogwheel, go to the advanced settings and click visibility tab. And now I can disable this entire module for phones and tablets. And you can see that it's grayed out, but if I check in desktop, it looks just like before. And in mobile, it should be grayed out as well. So this means that this won't be visible in front end. And this button I want to keep, but I want to center align it in mobile and tablet view. So I go to the design tab for the button, go to alignment, and I activate the responsive options. And for tablet, I will center align it. And this value will be inherited to the mobile view as well. And uh, I would like to tweak the buttons a little bit for a mobile. And I'm going to do some global settings in the presets because I want this style to be available for all, for all my buttons on the website. So I uh, click the presets and the gold button and I click the pen to edit. And I go to the design tab, the button settings and the button text size. And uh, we can keep it 15 pixels for desktop and tablet, but in uh, smartphone, I want to drop it down a couple of pixels, maybe 14, 13, I think looks good. Okay, and yes, I'm sure I want to have that as a global preset. Well, I would like to have less padding in my smaller screens in top and bottom of the hero area. So let's go into the section settings and to the design tab and spacing. And let's activate the responsive design. So we go to tablet and uh, maybe we could have like 80 times 120. Looks neat. And uh, the phone, you would like to have a little bit less, like 50 and 80. Looks nice. And you can see that this divider looks a little bit different on mobile. So if we go back to the desktop mode, you can see that this angle is not as steep when you look at the desktop. And the reason for this is if we look at the divider settings in the sections, I go to the bottom and we have a divider height of 100 pixels and it will still be 100 pixels high uh, in uh, tablet and mobile, but these screens are not as wide as the desktop screen. And this is why it looks uh, a little bit more extreme on the smaller screen sizes. So I'm going to reduce this and uh, we can go by maybe 50 for tablet. Let's have a look. So before, let's delete that. It looked like this. And with 50, it looks like this. So I think that looks better. And uh, on mobile, we can actually have half that value, so 25. So now it looks a little bit more nice, I think. Okay, so that was our hero area. Let's style these blurbs for tablet and mobile phones. So you can see that they overlap in tablet and this is because they have a ne negative margin. So we want to remove that from the two last blurbs here. So I will open this one and go to the design tab. Let's expand this one like this. We go to spacing and here's the ne negative margin. So I actually want to add a positive margin for um, tablet. So I might add just 15 pixels there. Now we see a big difference. And uh, on phone, yeah, it looks pretty nice. So let's do the same thing for uh, the last one, which is this one. 
design spacing and the responsive editing and we say 15 pixels instead nice i press command plus which is the short command to making the going to a smaller device looks like this and if you would like to you could go in here and tweak all the font sizes and image sizes for different de devices it's the same procedure oh here we have the text module and our uh, global presets we could actually edit them now so let's go in the text module go to the design tab and uh, let's check out the text size and we can start by editing the tablet mode so we have the text size is 17 pixels for desktop we can keep that in tablet but i would like to have it slightly smaller maybe 15 or no 16 pixels for um, mobile and uh, we can reduce the line height a little bit on mobile maybe 1.4 like that okay and uh, then we have the headings so let's go to the heading 4 and let's see it's 12 pixels on desktop and uh, i would like to have it maybe 12 pixels on ipad as well but we can have 11 pixels in mobile and then we have the heading 2 we have 42 pixels in desktop and uh, let's go for maybe a little bit smaller in tablet 34 yeah and we have the smartphone even less there i think something like that and then we have the heading three should be also smaller in the smaller uh, screen sizes so we have the heading four we could actually keep that one in uh, tablet but in mobile we could um, go down to maybe 22 23 that looks good yeah i think we are happy now with the text module and of course we want to add this to our global presets i almost forgot so let's not let's not edit that content let's see we go back in there go to the design tab apply to active presets so the mobile styling will also be a preset so we don't have to redo that on all our pages let's style the blog grid so we go to the design settings and the title text and uh, i think this looks pretty good in tablet so let, let's have a look in the phone view there we go uh, it looks decent but i think we could maybe tweak it a little bit so we have have the h2 heading so that could be maybe a little bit smaller 23 pixels and we have this text could possibly also be a little bit smaller 13 pixels oh no let's go for oops 14 pixels and we have this text with the date and the category we can actually change that one maybe down to 11 pixels something like that you can tweak this uh, as you like we have this call to action area and it inherits the heading 2 format that we edited before and the button stylings that we set in the global presets so this actually looks pretty good i think maybe we could reduce some of the padding here just for mobile and tablet if we would like to by going to the section settings design spacing and here we have the padding top and bottom and uh, if we check here in the tablet we can reduce it to maybe 120 
and we have the same top and bottom and on the smartphone maybe we can go for like 90 like that okay we have our logos and they will be stacked on top of each other in mobile and in tablet they will be stacked three and three so i think that looks pretty good and then we have our full width bottom image yeah so that's how we create a responsive mobile optimized design in divi everyone like to talk about themselves i guess so let's create our about us page in the top we have a hero area with a nice dark gradient in the top image and we have the divider shape that you recognize from our home page if we scroll down we have some nice animated number counters and an image and some text so we'll use a specialty section here and further down we have our history in the two columns of text with a button then we have uh, some blurbs describing our services and products with a nice subtle background image if we scroll down we have uh, maybe the most important resources of this company it's the employees so i put a little bit extra energy to make them look really nice these contact cards and if we hover we can see that there are color in the uh, images and we also have nice shadowing effect so if we scroll further down we recycle the logos uh, also known from the home page okay so let's get started and uh, we can actually take another route we go to the wordpress dashboard we go to pages and now we can click about us in the list of our pages and uh, we close this one and click edit with the divi builder so that's another way to edit the page and i will choose a build from scratch you could of course import a pre-made layout but uh, that's not what we are doing here so we start building okay so this is the design that we are looking for and uh, i will actually make a little trick here i will not use one column here as you would think I would use another column structure here. Uh, I will actually use this one. And the reason for that is that I don't want the text so, to go all the way out. And this is an alternative to using width or max width for the modules. Uh, you can also use a different row structure. So I'll begin with adding a text module. And we could actually copy and paste this text just to save some time. So let's click this one and paste as text. I'll copy it. We make some proper spacing. And this one should be uh, age four. This one should be an age one. And we have actually not styled this in the global presets. So that's one thing that we're going to fix. And this is just the body copy. So let's style the H1, the heading one, by clicking this pencil. And we choose the heading font, and it's Caramant uh, Garmont. And uh, we keep these settings. We choose the 333 as the heading color. And then we have the heading text size. And uh, I want that to be 68 pixels for desktop we can actually fix the mobile settings right now on the fly so 56 pixels for tablet and maybe 38 for mobile i'll actually reduce that a little bit more like that 35 okay looks nice and then we have um, let's go back to the desktop view we have this text. I want that one to be a little bit bigger in the hero area. So I'll bump that one up to maybe 18 pixels. And I will also change it to this gray color. Okay, before we do anything else, I want to add the background image because the white 
uh, heading will not be possible to read otherwise. So we go to the cogwheel in the um, section settings and to background. And we'll add a background image. Let's take this one from the team. Okay, we want to have an uh, overlay and a gradient. So let's go to the gradient settings and we can add a background gradient. And I want this gradient to be, be placed above the background image. So we set yes. And uh, well, I got what I was wishing for, but maybe a little bit too much. So we will change these colors to be a bit transparent. So the first part, I want to have black color and I want to have some opacity. And we have the uh, final, the second part of it. I want also to have some black color, but I want it to be lighter or more transparent. So we can actually drag it down there. And now we are going to change the angle because you can see here that it's dark uh, in the bottom and gets lighter all the way up to the top. But I want it to be dark from the left and lighter to the right. So we have the gradient direction, which, which is 180 degrees, and I'm going to change that to 90 degrees. There we go. So now we can see the preview that it's darker here and lighter here. So that's a nice design, I think. Okay, we also have a uh, divider shape. We're going to fix that one. So we're going to use the same as on the uh, homepage. So I go to design dividers and bottom and uh, I choose uh, the divider style. It's this one. And uh, we can actually change the divider height for different devices when we are at it. So for iPad, maybe we can have 50. And for phone, I think we use 25. So we have the right angle in the corners. Good. Let's change the heading text color. So first of all, I want to add this age two settings to my global presets. So I forgot about that before. So I go to the design tab, my heading text, and uh, I click here and say I want to apply these styles from the heading to my active presets. And I say yes. Okay, and if we take a look, we have our settings for the H1. Perfect. So let's go back. In this case, I want this heading one to be white. So let's go to the settings and set the heading one to be white. Okay, just some more padding needed here. So I'll just grab this one. We could maybe have a hundred pixels. There we go. And uh, maybe a little bit more in the bottom. Go for maybe 150 or so. The next, next section we are making is this one. And this is a specialty section because we are mixing this column structure with this column structure. So I will show you exactly what I mean by adding a new section. And this time we are not using the blue regular section. We are using this red or orange specialty section. And the design structure I'm looking for is this one. So it's one 50% wide column, and then we could add uh, one, two, or actually three columns in this uh, right side. Okay, so we start by this right side here, and we will add a one column row, and we will add a text module. And uh, we could actually copy and paste some of the text here. Oops. Here we go. Paste this text. We make proper spaces. And this one will be in heading four. 
this one will be a heading two and this one will just be regular body copy okay nice and to the left we will add an image so let's add an image module we click the image to choose our image and uh, there we have another image of the great team at our company the divi crib and uh, yeah looks pretty nice but if you have a sharp design eye you can see something is off because this image here ends here and is not aligned so they have different width and we want to fix that because this is a specialty section and we haven't set the um, default width to 1200 pixels as we did to the rows in the um, standard sections so i will click the cog wheel for the specialty section i go to the design tab and uh, sizing and i want the inner width to have a max width of 1200 pixels instead of 1080 and there we go you can see that we have synced the sizing okay so now we will check out the reason why i choose the specialty section not the regular section because when i add another row i can actually add another row structure inside of this section and that's something that i can't do in the regular section layout and uh, this time we will add these three number counters so i will add three columns in this row and let's search for a number and there we have it number counter so there we have the standard design so we will change that but let's have a look at the numbers first 23 uh, employees so we start with that one employees oops employees yep 23 and we will remove this percentage sign by going to elements and just set off to percentage sign okay we'll go to the design tab to change these settings so the number font should be carla and uh, the number font weight should be bold it should be gold and uh, the number text size should be 50. there we go so let's change this subtext or it's actually called the title here in the number counter settings so the font should be carla and uh, we do actually want to have it in uh, small caps okay we go back to the design settings and uh, it looks pretty good as is i think so we want to reduce uh, the spacing here so one way of doing that is actually to go to the settings of the section go to design sizing choose use custom gutter width and set it to two so that will give us some extra space to work with and uh, i could actually reduce this one and we want to reduce this space as well so i will go to the design settings and uh, we can change the line height for this one the number so the line height could be and this is a bit of a surprise more we can add extra and i even want to add some more to move it down so this is also a little bit of a hack move <laughs> but whatever works as long as you don't have a line break in here it will look nice so uh, i will take this one and reduce some spacing there so now it starts to look pretty nice i think so let's try to copy this one one two and we drag and drop it So let's see the other values. We have 72 projects and 100% happy clients, of course. So 72 projects. And then we had the percentage. Happy clients. And they are 100. 
and let's go to elements and turn off the or turn on the percentage sign so this looks good and let's have a look so it won't break when we use a smaller screen so this is a way to check out that everything fits on the screen and soon it's going over to the tablet view okay that was actually a little bit too big so it didn't fit so let's reduce the sizing a little bit by going to the row settings design sizing use custom gutter width and um, drag it down to two so this means that the spacing the air between the objects in here will uh, be smaller so now oops let's try again I grab the corner here and drag it just to see that everything fits and okay it still breaks well let's tweak it even more so we go here and uh, we'll change the sizing of the numbers and uh, now it's 50 we could uh, drag it down to maybe 45 and now I will extend the number text size by right click and say extend this value number 45 to all number counters on this page because there are only these three so now you could see that this is applied and uh, if we make another try okay it looked good but happy clients did actually line break so let's do a final little tweak so we'll uh, reduce the sizing of this title the h3 from 16 to 14 and let's make it bold as well i think that was what i have done in the um, demo page and let's extend the heading title level heading three to all number counters on this page and we extend Okay, that didn't work. The text title site, uh, size extend to 14 to all number counters on this page. Uh, now it happens something here. And also I want to extend the boldness of this heading. So extend title font bold to all number counters. There we go. And now the final test if it actually works on all screen sizes. Yes, it doesn't break. Amazing. So this looks pretty nice and I want to do one final touch to make it look nice. And that is adding an, an animation effect. So I could double click here to open the settings and I go to design animation and I will use the zoom effect like this. And this works really good together with the number counter since the numbers are counting up and then you have the zoom at the same time. So let's exit the visual builder and save just to preview this. So there we have, they are counting up and just to refresh to have a look at the animation, there we go. The next part is this one, it's a pretty easy one. So let's create a two column text uh, section. Let's go down here, click the plus, and we create a regular section again. And we use one column to start with, and we insert some text. So we have our history. And pick a, pick a winning team. So this one should be an H4, the golden one. And this one should be in H2, heading 2. And we set the sign, text, and center line. Good. And let's now insert a two column row and a text module. And uh, we could actually just take this text and uh, paste it like this, just to show how it looks. And now I could take this one, we could copy it, I can drag it and drop it. And there we go. I could actually increase the spacing if you would like to make the readability better. So I click the gear icon or the um, cogwheel icon 
and I choose design, sizing, use custom gutter width, and now we'll actually uh, have a bigger one, so it's a bigger spacing here. So this might make it easier to read. And then we will add a button below this, so I add a new row. I will add a button module, and uh, I will align it to the center. And we could change the text, contact us, and we can link to the contact us page by using the dynamic content page link, contact us. Perfect. So let's create the next section. And that's a regular one too. And uh, we will use uh, this design. And this is actually three columns in this row. So this is one, this is two, and here we have one 50% column that is empty. So that would be, let me see, this design. So we will have a blurb module in there. Perfect. So let's start by adding the background image, this one with the dark overlay. So I will go to the section settings, background and image, and we'll add a background image from our media library. And here we have it. So we are putting on our uh, overlay. So I choose background image blend from normal to multiply and I go to background color and I choose black and I click the color to make it a bit transparent. So I drag this one down. So here we go. We have about 87% opacity. So that looks pretty nice. Let's save that one. So now we're going to style our blurbs like this. So let's go to the settings. So first of all, I'll remove this uh, body copy. No, I will not. I will have some short body copy below. So we can paste that one in there. Just remove this. There we go. And uh, we will uh, actually change this from being an image to use one of the pre-made icons in Divi. So I go down to image and icon and I will use an icon. And let's find this check mark. There we go. Okay, but now it's on top and I want it to be on the side. So let's go to design, image and icon. The icon color should be gold. And uh, I want it to be placed not on the top, but to the left. We should, of course, change the text color here. So let's go to the design settings for the text. And we have the title text. And I want that one to be Cormorant Garamond in the title. And that one should be white. And it should also be a bit bigger. Maybe something like that. And then we have the body text. And I want that one to be Carla. There we go. And I want it to be um, this light gray color, actually. And uh, we can change it to maybe 15. Or, yeah, 15 is good. And we can reduce the line height a little bit. Like that, I guess. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's save that. Let's have a look here. Okay, so it's slightly different text here. So that's why it looks a bit different. But I also think that I might have used another layout. So these are pretty small. And I think I should use this one instead. Yeah, there we go. So now they have more, have more width here for the, the blurbs. And I could also set the design sizing gather width to two to add some more space in there. Perfect. And I will simply duplicate this and add that one out here. And then I can just uh, update the text. And uh, now I can just make three copies of this row. One, two, 
So now there are three. And now I could just replace the text here very quickly. I would also like to add some more padding here. So let's go for like 120 and maybe 120 as well. Let's undo that. Let's see if I could grab the padding. There we go. And 120. Ah, I think I undid that one as well by mistake. So 120. Come on. There we go. The next section is this section, the co-workers. So this will be contact cards with some nice hover effects and some contact information and social media links. And this might look a bit complicated, but it's not. I will show you all the steps. So let's go back. And first of all, I'm going to copy this section by right click and choose copy row. Then I will click here and insert a new section. I will close this one, right click and choose paste row. So there we have our header and uh, we can just add another text there like TV all stars. What can we do Oops, for you? And we remove that one. Okay, so let's add a row with three columns and start building. So we'll first add an image module for the portrait image. We'll click here and we choose someone from the media library. And you can see now that this color is square and it's in color. And we will make this round and we will make it uh, grayscale. So by doing that, we go to design and we choose order. So you can see that this is perfectly square. It's the same height and width. So that's something you have to do first before you can make them around in Divi. So uh, we have rounded corners in the border settings. And uh, here I can just add a value to get some rounding. But I can type like 50% for all sides and then we will have this nice round design so that looks really nice and professional and you didn't have to do anything in photoshop to make this one round then we have the border style and i want to add a golden border so i'll add one or two pixels let's go for two and the golden color like that perfect okay so then we had the effect that it's uh, grayscale or black and white when it's idle and when i hover it's in color so let's fix that one too. We go to filters that we used before on the logos. And now I want to set the saturation to zero on idle, which will make it black and white or grayscale. And I click the hover uh, icon and activate hover mode. And now I can set 100% saturation. And that means that it will be in color when hovering. So here's the idle and here's the hover mode. Nice. Okay, we'll add the name, the title and description. So let's click the plus sign to insert a text module. So you can see that there are some modules that are coming back that you use pretty often. And uh, we can actually paste this text or copy this text and paste it to save some time. There we go. So this one we can use the heading three. And this one should be the heading four, the title. And then we have a little bit smaller bold text there for the description. So let's fix that. And it's Carla, but the sizing is maybe 15. And let's make it bold like that let's make it a little bit gray as well okay now we want to center line this text so we browse down to the text alignment and set it to center looks pretty good 
actually this is not a bold text so we can change that if we want to keep the same look so let's go to regular there we go okay we have dividers and then we have some contact information so let's add the dividers press the plus button and i find the divider module yes i want to show the divider we go to the design tab go to line and we change the color to this uh, no we take this really light gray color and we set it to centered like that yeah looks pretty good and we'll add the contact information below the divider there we go so text and let's copy this text and we can paste it there we go and let's make this a click to call link by clicking the link tool and say link colon and we have the phone number and just remove other signs than numbers like that now people can call just by tapping it in mobile shift enter to make a line break and we want to have this uh, linked as well sometimes it will be linked automatically if not just type mail to colon and the email address and it will be a tap or click to email link okay let's center align this text as well there we go then i will just clone or duplicate this divider and i will place it below this contact information and then i will probably reduce the sizing here but let's wait a little bit longer for that uh, and then we have the social media links and i will actually import uh, this one that we made from the to the header and the footer and i will just make a little tweak to change the colors so let's click in this column and the plus sign and we will add from library and here we have our social media icons and we can see that they are there but they are white so it's hard to see them so i will click uh, double click them oops now i happen to duplicate it there we go to the settings and let's go to the Facebook icon. So let's go to the design tab, icon, and icon color, set it to gold. So I can actually test how it looks in hover. Okay, yeah, it would look like that. So we have to change the icon color on hover to white. And I will copy the icon styles and we go back. And I let's see if I can paste it directly in here. I think that would be possible, paste item styles. Wow, that's nice. And the last one, paste item styles. Perfect. And I will center align these social media icons. Starting to look nice. I will just have to tighten this up a little bit. But first I will go to the row settings, design, sizing. And yes, it's the custom gather width again. I will drag it down to two to make, give a little bit more room inside here. And uh, now it actually looks kind of good. I don't have to do any tweaking here with the margins. So one more thing that you can see here is that we have a shadow around here. Or we also actually have a thin line around it. So that we should add. And then we have the hover effect. So this is a little bit more complicated, you might think. Because now we have several modules here. So I can't add a line here and a line here and a line here. That will be messy. So we'll solve it by going into the row settings and now I can style this column, this whole column. So I press the uh, cogwheel and go to design. We choose border and I want to have a one pixel border like that and it should be light, light gray. And I also want to add a box shadow and I want to use this box shadow. That's famous now from the blog read and from the blurbs on the homepage. And I also want to change the hover effect here. So I will click the shadow blur strength, activate hover mode, and I will drag it up to maximum on hover. 
Okay, starts to look like something, but I would also like to um, increase the padding here so it won't go all the way out to the edges. So let's do that for this column. We choose spacing and we have padding. So I might just add like 40 pixels top, 40 pixels bottom, and the same to the left and to the right. So there we go, starting to look really beautiful. So now we have the last thing before we uh, create the two other ones. And that's the hover effect uh, that will lift it up a little bit. You can see that it jumps up a few pixels. So if you join me in the earlier chapters, you know how we do this. I go to the column settings. I go to design and to transform. And we choose this one, the second one, transform translate. I deactivate the chain so I just can change the height. Uh, and on hover, I click the hover icon and active hover mode. And now I can lift it up like minus 10 pixels I would like to have. Okay, sometimes it's hard to do that dragging, so I just type it on my keyboard. So here's the idle and here's the hover. Okay, that looks really, really nice. I also want to go into the image settings and make one file and tweak because I want to center align this. So this will be center aligned on all screen sizes so it won't be left aligned anywhere. So now I can just copy and paste this. And again, I don't want to copy and paste every single module here. So I'll go into the settings of the row and I delete column number two and column number three. And now I will duplicate this and I will duplicate this. So now I have three identical columns. So this is extremely efficient. So now I can just go here and I can change, for example, the images. I can change the text and the links. And then I have created my um, employee gallery. And of course, maybe I have more than three employees. Then I just take this row and I duplicate it. And now I have six employees and I can keep doing this forever and ever. So let's just exit the visual builder and uh, we will preview this. So here we go. We have a nice hero area. We have our image and uh, we have our counter modules, number counters. We have our history. We have the blurbs and we have our employees with a nice, nice hover effect. So the next thing that we are going to do is adding our favorite clients. And we've already done this on the homepage. So this is recycling. So I will show you a quick way of just adding this information and sharing between pages. So one way we could have done it was by saving this, this section from the homepage to our Divi library. Another way of doing it is just going to the home page, activating the visual builder. And let's say that I just want to recycle this content on another page. I can just right click the section and choose copy section. I can go to my second page. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong one. So I will exit the visual builder and I will go to about us and I will enable the visual builder. There we go. I will click here and I will right click and choose paste section. And here we go. So that was a pretty quick move. That's it. We can actually have a look, zoom out using this uh, magnifying glass just to have a helicopter view of our About Us page. And uh, it looks pretty neat, I think. And you could, of course, go through it and fine tune all the tablet and, and mobile design settings. But I think you know the drill now. So we will move on creating the news page. This news page will dynamically display all the posts from your website. And this setup could easily be used for a blog as well. So below this hero area, 
you can see that we have a sidebar to the right with a search field. We have link to the post categories and we link to our social media. And in the middle, we have a list of our blog posts with a featured image, the post title. We have the publish date, the category, which is linked. And uh, we have an excerpt and a read more text. So this is the list showing the latest. It's in um, date order. And if I want to display older entries, I can just click the pagination. Let's get started. So we jump into the development site. And first of all, I want to recycle some of the design settings that we made on the home page where we use the blog grid, which is an, another uh, setting for uh, the blog module in Divi. So here we go. To recycle some of the settings here, I will enable the visual builder. And this is maybe something that I should have done when we created the home page, but better now than never. So I will edit the blog post module and just right click the purple top bar and I will say apply styles to active presets. So this means that I will save all the design settings we made with the fonts and styling in the blog module and this will become the default design. So now I can exit this page and when we head back to the news page uh, and publish a blog post module it will already have the correct fonts and styling. So I go to the news page which for now is empty, looks kind of dull. So let's fix that by enabling the visual builder. And we will not build from scratch this time. And uh, we will not use a pre-made layout but we will clone an existing page because I want to reuse, recycle this hero area from the about us page. You can see that it has the same look and feel. So I will use that on the news page as well and just switch the images and the copy. So we click clone existing page and this is also a great Thames time saver in Divi. So I see a list of my existing pages and I will choose the about us page to clone. Okay, so now I will simply delete the stuff that we won't need on this page. So for example, this section, I will just hit the trash can and uh, I will delete this one as well and I will delete this one this one and this one so we're just keeping the header okay so let's switch the copy in this one and, uh, let's see we have be informed and our latest news maybe we can use some capital letters there muse news okay and let's switch the background image by going to the section settings background choosing the image and uh, let's find a nice picture this one there we go so we didn't have to make everything from scratch again so let's create a new section for our blog post uh, content so it's a regular section and I want to have one wide column and uh, uh, one a bit smaller column. So two thirds and one third. And to the left, we will use the blog module. There we go. And you can see that it uses the um, blog grid design. But since this is a more narrow design, it's just one blog grid item per per column or per row. So uh, let's change that. We go to the design settings, layout, and instead of grid, we should choose full width. It looks a little bit the same, but it isn't. Uh, and now we should just make some tweaks. We want to remove the box shadow. So let's go down to box shadow and choose none. Okay, already looks better. And uh, that's about it actually. It's kind of nice design, I would say. This works fine for a blog page or a news page. Uh, we go back to the content tab, click content, and uh, we want to choose five blog posts. And uh, 
the reason for that is you don't want to have too much images and, and stuff on one page. It could be heavy to load, a long page load time, which is bad for your SEO and user experience. And uh, you also, uh, I also want to display the feature with the pagination. And we have six blog posts, so that's one of the reasons why I choose to display five posts on this page. So let's uh, go down to elements. And on the home page, we didn't want to display the pagination, but this time I do. So I will cho choose yes for show pagination. And there we have it. It displays the older entries, but it's baby blue. Doesn't look too good. So let me click the pencil. The shortcut to the pagination text styling. And let's choose the correct font, which is Carla. And let's choose the correct color, which is gold. Yeah, so there we have it. This is the pagination. So let's create the sidebar. And that's this design. And you don't have to use the WordPress widgets and stuff as in the old days. Now we can create this directly in the Divi Builder. So I'll start out with a search module. There we go. And we can have a placeholder text inside. We can say search. Which elements to display. I don't think we need the search button. So we can remove that, being minimalistic. And uh, here we can decide which type of content that should be included in the search results. And I will exclude pages. I just want this to be a news article search. And I want to display all categories. We want to have a heading on top of the search field. So I will actually add a text module above. And we can say find more. And let's make that an H3. Okay, and we'll put that above the search field. Now let's reduce the space here. More like Okay, I want to add a divider. We go to the design tab, line, and I want to use this light gray color. Below this one, we should add our categories. So text module. And we say categories, it's a heading, and then we have inspiration. And we have case, which is our two categories. So I like to type all text before I style it. And uh, let's mark these two and uh, press here for a bullet list. And let's make this one a heading three as well. Okay, and we will link this one. And I think it's news category inspiration. Choose OK, and let's make a link for the cases as well. News, category, case. So I can just duplicate this divider so we don't have to style it again like that. And uh, we should now add some social media follow icons. So let's start with the text module and say follow us. And let's make that a H3. And uh, now we will include the social media icons. So I just click here for in adding a new module. And now I will add from library, which is my social media icons from the library. And they are white, so that's why I can see them. If you can't find them here, we can go to the wireframe mode. And uh, I can click this gear icon. And uh, we can go back now to the visual display, the desktop. So I go to the Facebook to change that one. It should be gold instead of white. And um, the design tab, the icon settings for the Facebook icon. And we set that to gold. And when it's hovered, let's click the hover icon. And uh, that's how it looks now, not too good. So I want to change the icon color to white on hover. So it's white on gold. So this is the idle design and this is the hover design. Perfect, so let's click the back button. And now I will copy the styles from the Facebook icon, copy item styles. 
paste item styles. Where do we have that? There we go. Paste item styles. I don't know why I have to do that twice, but hey, as long as it works. Okay, but this is kind of floating in the air. So let's let's change that. And maybe also let's go to the search field. I think I forgot one setting. Design, and we have the search text. There we go. So field font, yes. My eye caught something there. Let's change that to Carla. So I will create a, a gold golden frame for this one, a golden border. So to do that, uh, I will open the settings for this row and I will go to the second column, clicking the cogwheel and to the design tab and to the border tab. And uh, I will I will add a border width of one pixel like that. And I want it to be in gold. Looks a little bit better, but we need some spacing here. So let's fix that. So I browse down in the design tab and um, no, I browse up and there we have the spacing tab. So let's add 40 pixels of padding and uh, we click this chain to make it apply to both top and bottom and we do the same thing for right and left. So now it looks a lot better. Okay, I can see that I've actually used another row structure here. So let's fix that. But first of all, I can also see that there's a small gap here and I've used a bigger gap and that's the good old gutter width. So let's fix that first. So we go to the row settings, the design tab, sizing, use custom gutter width. Yes, drag that up to four. And now we can see that the spacing is increased, but still this shouldn't be as wide as this and we want more space for the blog feed. So in the row settings, I can change the column structure and I can show you two ways to do that. One way is to click the column and click this icon for column structure. And then I get all the column structure options here. But I could also enter the row settings and from there I can drop down this list. Okay, so now we have this design and I want to change it to this design. So that's a pretty quick way of doing it. Okay, have I missed something? Yes, I have. We have this text. So let's add some follow us text. Just hit enter, click the paste as text icon and then paste the text. Okay, so maybe we can fix some of the spacings here. I think actually one thing we should do is to go into the divider settings line and it should be positioned vertically centered and uh, I can actually extend the line position by right clicking it and say that all dividers should be vertically centered on this page extend so there was it was just one more but that's a quick way of fixing it and now I can just drag here to make it a little bit more slim and drag this one and maybe this one maybe a little less spacing here a little bit less there maybe a little less there it's a nice blog design and we are going to reuse this layout later when we create the category pages and also the search result page in the DV theme builder. The contact us page is probably one of the most important pages on your website. So this is where your clients or potential clients can get in touch with you. And if you have a complicated contact us page, you will probably lose leads and potential customers. So we're creating this beautiful contact us page with a minimalistic contact form that we'll create with the DV form module. We will add a checkbox where you have to agree with the privacy policy in order to send it. And we will also link to the privacy policy in this form. We will protect this form from spam by using Google reCAPTCHA version 3. So I will guide you step by step how to do that as well. 
we will add our contact information with some nice blurbs with phone, email, street address, and a link to map, and also our social media channels. We have an FAQ for the frequently asked questions where you can expand or collapse these boxes. And last but not least, we have a map embedded from Google Maps. And uh, Google made it a little bit complicated to use this feature. So I will guide you how to actually embed a map like this from Google Maps without even having a Google account or a Google API or adding your credit card and stuff like that. So this is a super easy and convenient way to add a map to your website. Okay, so let's start by jumping into our development site. And uh, I will actually recycle some stuff from the news page that we did in the chapter before. I will keep this hero area and I will keep this little box to the right of the sidebar and we'll change the rest of the content. So I'll click the contact us page in the menu and now it's empty. So I will enable the visual builder to start creating some content. So I click clone existing page. And this is a big time saver. I use this all the time in Divi. And I will use the news page. So let's start by deleting the stuff that we don't need. And in this case, it's the blog feed. And we'll keep the rest. So let's start by changing the background image in the hero area by clicking the cogwheel in the section settings and click background tab and the image. And let's use the lonely guy in the office. There we have him. Poor guy. Okay. And then let's change the copy in the hero. Keep in touch. That's our heading four. And contact us. That's our heading two. Okay, so let's start by filling this box with contact information. And here we are using the Divi Blurb module to use these nice predefined um, icons. So let's start by deleting the stuff that we're not using. But we can actually keep the line and the social media icons. So let's just delete this text there we go okay so now i will add a blurb module so i will transform this to this i can actually copy the phone number there uh, the title okay and i can delete the body copy because we'll just work with the title and now let's go to image and icon. And I want to use an icon, not a custom image. So I click yes. And uh, let's find the phone icon in here. Unfortunately, there are no search feature in this one. So you have to browse to find it. There we have the phone. Let's also link this blurb. So if you tap it in phone or if you click it on the computer, you will call this number. Tell column and then the number. Like that. And we have created a click to call link. So let's design it because it doesn't look good at all. So image icon. I want to change the icon color to our gold brand color. And I don't want to place it on top. I want to place it to the left. So already we have a big difference in there. Okay, this is the look that we are going for. So I think the title text should be changed to Carla. There we go. And I would also like to decrease the sizing of this icon a little bit. So we can use icon font size by clicking this one, switching it to yes. And now I can drag it. Maybe we can use this size. Looks okay, I think. Good. So we save this one. And now I can just 
I can actually drag it to the top because that's where the contact information should be if we look at this. And now I can just duplicate this one, two, three times. So we have four. So I click this one and there we will add our email address with this nice envelope. So info oops at db crib.com and the link instead of tell colon will add mail to info at tvcrib.com let's change the icon by going down to or up to image and icon and now we're looking for the envelope there we go nice okay and the next one that's the street address and we have this pin. So let's find that one. So my street 80 Stockholm. Uh, whoops, street is spelled like that. Emission icon and uh, the pin icon. There we go. And we could link that to maybe Google Maps or so, but I'll just put the bracket in there for now. And uh, yeah, then we have the map or the find your way. And we're going to use an anchor link here, a local link that will send the visitor down to the page where the map will be. So find your way and we'll change the icon to a map. So let's see if we can find that one. Should be somewhere around where this is, I think. Yeah, there we go. And uh, now we will link it. We'll put a hashtag and I will simply call it map for now. So we will add this as a CSS ID to our um, map later. So it will send the visitor down to the map if they click this link. So I'll just have to remember that for now. So let's build a contact form with the Divi Builder using the contact form module. This is what we are going for. It's a minimalistic, really nice looking form where we have the name, email, we have a drop down for category and we have a message field. And then we'll add this mandatory uh, checkbox for the privacy policy. And here we are also linking to our privacy policy. So if you click it, it will open in a new tab. And uh, we'll also add this Google reCAPTCHA. So we will protect it from spam using this service. It's reCAPTCHA version three from Google, which is completely free by the way. Let's head back to our development site and we'll start by clicking the plus sign to insert a contact form module. So here it is. And by default, this is the look of the Divi form. So we can start by adding a new field by clicking here. And we can call it category because we want to add this drop down category. From start, we have the name, the email, and the message, the open text field. So we'll have the title category so the first one is the id that's not visible for the user but that's something we can use to to design the email later and in the field options we can change this from being just an input field for text to being a drop down like that and now we will add our options in the drop down so that could be like support it could be pre-sale and maybe we can be lazy and just add other and i can change this from being a mandatory field or a required field to be just a field that you can fill in fill out if you want to or not okay so we'll get back here again to uh, add the um, privacy policy checkbox just in a while but we'll just explore the other options first so the success message, that's what's displayed on screen when the form is successfully sent. So that could be thank you. And we can also change the text on the submit bot button, maybe to send, if you like that better. 
we have the email uh, settings and we'll actually dive into that a little bit later in this video uh, in the right redirect field you can use a custom page like slash thank you instead of just displaying a thank you message on the screen you can send the user to this url when the form is successfully sent but i'm happy with the message on the screen for now and then we have the spam protection that we will explore in a little while so let's design this first before we add the extra options here in the design tab we can design the fields so the fields background color i will actually use white for now and the field text color i will use this gray color and the focus background that's the color when you um, when the user clicks the field to enter information so we can keep that as is and the field focus text color it could be a little bit a little bit darker when the user actually is typing the text okay and the font should be carla as on the rest of our website like that and let's have a look here we can actually increase the font size a little bit shouldn't be hard to read so we can drag that one up to maybe something like that uh, maybe 17 is good okay we can actually go down to text alignment and that should be the way it is we don't use a title for this one and the captcha text we can skip because we are adding the Google recaptcha in a little while. Then we have the button settings and we want this button to look like the other buttons on our page, like this one in the top. So let's style this one really quickly. So we're using the text size 15. The button text color should be white. And the button background should be gold. The border radius should be zero, zero. That's what's making it square like that. Okay. And the button border color should be gold like that. The button font will use Carla here as well. There we go. And we will have all caps. We will also have some letter spacing, I think maybe one pixel or so there we go maybe actually we'll have the font weight to bold i think that will look good yes there we go i want to show the button icon this one we can see it there but this one the little arrow there so we'll use that one and it should be white as is placed to the right and only displayed on hover okay so now we want to add some margin to this bottom so we'll add 12 pixels to the top and the same to the bottom and we have 28 pixels to the left and 28 pixels to the right so now it will look really nice and then we can do one thing uh, if i browse down here we can change this icon since it, it is a contact form and we can use the envelope instead as an icon there now it's really hard to see where the different fields are and we want to fix that and we should have these nice lines so to achieve that we go to design we go to border and we want to add a bottom border so we click this box and it should be one pixel like that and we can use this color maybe let's add a checkbox for the privacy policy and let's make it mandatory and let's link it to our privacy policy to do that I will open my contact form module, the settings, and I will add a new field. And I will call this field privacy. I don't want to have a title in it, so I will just enter a blank space there. And now I will choose field options. And instead of an input field, I want to have a checkbox like that. And now I will type the first part of the text here. I have read and agreed to the. To the. 
and I will add an extra space here. And now we will add the actual link to the privacy policy. So it's a small icon. It's almost a bit hidden here, the chain. So if I click it, I can add a link URL. So that could be slash privacy policy maybe to my privacy policy page and the link text. So if I don't add a link text here, it will add a small icon here that I can click, but I think it will be more clear if I say privacy policy like that. And I want it to be required, so no one should be able to send this uh, form to me if they don't consent with this privacy policy. Now we just have one issue, and you can see that this does not look like a checkbox, it's just a simple line, and that's because I choose this design for this form. But luckily there's an easy fix for this. So if I'm going to the design tab for this specific field, the checkbox, I can go to border and I can choose a border style for all sides and I'll set that one to the value one. And now we have a nice looking checkbox and I will save it. That's an easy way to create your privacy policy or GDPR consent field. If you would like to have a more thorough description about your privacy policy already here in the form, you could use the um, title field. So I could add some text here describing my privacy policy like this. So uh, I think to be GDPR compliant, you have to describe it briefly here, your privacy policy without the user having to click the link. But I'm not giving any legal advice here, so you have to find that out for yourself. No one likes spam, so let's protect our Divi contact form with Google reCAPTCHA version 3. So this is completely free and it's also invisible, so you don't have to force your users to solve puzzles or mark which images contains cars and stuff. So I think this is a really nice solution to stop spam. So let's start by opening the contact form settings by clicking the cogwheel. And if we scroll down to spam protection under the content tab, we see that we have basic CAPTCHA activated. And that's this mathematic assignment here that's not doing too much to stop spam and it's just annoying for your visitors. So let's turn that one off and instead we want to use a spam protection service. So I hit yes. And the only service provider that is supported here is reCAPTCHA. So we go with that. And then we have to choose a reCAPTCHA version 3 account. So I click add and I will set an account name and this is just for internal use on our site. So I can just say DV crib. And then I have to have a site key and a secret key for the version three reCAPTCHA. And then I have to go to the Google reCAPTCHA console to get these keys. So let's open a new tab and I will go to the reCAPTCHA site from Google and I have included this link below the video so just click it if you want to follow and here I click the v3 admin console do not click get started or documentation because it's easy to get lost in this jungle trust me I've been here a few times so we go to the admin console and if you are logged into your Google account you will see this if you're not make sure you log in and if you don't have a Google account yet, just register a Gmail and you will get in here. Okay, so first a label for internal use. I think it's good to just set the address or the, let's see, the domain and the reCAPTCHA type. So we will use the latest one, which is the V3 and not the V2, the old one with the cars and, and stuff with the images, really annoying. Add your domain so no one else can use your keys on their website using your traffic. So I will set divicrib.com and if you want to use it on more domains you can just click the plus sign and add additional domains. And uh, I will ac accept the reCAPTCHA terms of service. And sure, send me alerts if there are um, increased spam traffic or so. And now I get a site key and a secret key. So I will just copy the site key by clicking 
and I go back and I will paste it, my site key. And let's go back here and copy the secret key. And we'll paste it. And now I can click submit. Okay, good. So now I will scroll down and I will choose my DiviCrib reCAPTCHA account. The last step that I need to do is choose a minimum score. And if you click the question mark here, you'll have some uh, information about it. So this is how hard you want to be on the spammers, how, how high you want to build your wall, so to speak. If you set a very low value, uh, some spam will uh, slip through the net. And if you have a really high value, there's a risk of uh, real humans getting caught in your spam protection. So what is the perfect number here? Well, my experience is that it's somewhere between 0.8 or 0.7. So just try it out. And uh, when you are logged in here, you will be able to see analytics. So after a while, you can see how many suspicious requests that are caught. And you can see if there's actually slipping uh, spam through your spam protection, you can increase this. So maybe start at uh, 0 0.7. And then if the spam goes through, you can try to increase it bit by bit. But don't set the highest value because this will prevent your real clients to, to contact you. You don't want that. Okay, so let's hit the green button, save changes. And I will save my edits. And if I now exit the visual builder, we can see that we have a Google reCAPTCHA badge down to the right. And uh, this means that everything is working fine as it is with our keys and, and our domain. If you have an error message, you have to review your settings here. Maybe you didn't uh, use the correct key or uh, maybe you, you forgot to, to add your domain here or have a typo in your domain. Uh, otherwise, it should look like this and uh, this will automatically protect your forms. So that's it. Your forms are now protected from spam with Google Recaptcha version 3. <laughs>So let's create a list of frequently asked questions and answers. So we'll use a toggle where you see the questions and when you click it, it expands and displays the answer. So we head back to our development site and let's add a new section by clicking the blue plus sign. I will use a regular section and we'll use a two column design row with a 50-50 design. And we will insert a toggle module. And before we do anything, I will just close this one and I will go to the section settings and we will add the background color, which will be this dark gray 1C, 1C, 1C. Okay, let's head back to our toggle module and uh, we can start by adding the question here. I'll add some lorem ipsum text and we can just keep this one as a dummy text for now. In the state tab, I can choose if it should be closed by default or open by default. And I want it to be closed by default so you can have a nice overview as a visitor. I will change the background color of this toggle and I want it to be dark gray like that. Okay, let's head into the design settings and the icon, it's this one. And I want that one to be gold. Could also change the size of it if you want to but I think it looks nice like this. Okay, let's go to the toggle and uh, I want to have the toggle, toggle background color. That's how it looks when it's expanded or closed or open. And I just want to use this dark gray color in both. So I choose it here just to be sure. And then we go to the text settings and I don't want to have it center lined or anything. So let's head down to the title text. And first off, I want this to be white and I want it to be white in all states. And uh, it's an H5, I maybe use an H3 or so. And we change the title font. What have you used here? Oh, it's that Cormorant Garamond. There we have it. And uh, we could actually increase the font size a little bit like that. 
and then we have the body text i can click the pencil here as a, a shortcut and let's change that to carla our brand font for body text and i want it to be 16 pixels maybe like that and let's change the color we can use maybe this light light gray color it looks nice and uh, now we have this border if we close this i think i want to have that in gold it looks pretty nice in white as well but let's try it in gold so i scroll down and we have the border tab and let's choose all sides and we use a one width border and we click the brand color gold yeah looks really nice i could actually make a design if i set this to zero i just use the bottom border and i set this to one that's also a pretty nice design that you recognize from the contact form so that's another option for you it would look like this but i'll go for the square design like this perfect so let's add maybe one two three four extra so we have five there and now i could just click all these by holding my command key on the mac keyboard or the control key on pc so we'll click here and i click here i click here and here and here and i actually missed the first one so let's click that one too and now i can right click choose copy modules and now i can right click here and i can choose paste modules voila so now i can just enter these different toggles and i can just change the question and the answer and that's a really quick way to create an faq so let's not forget about the heading on top of the faq so i'm lazy and will copy that text so let's add another row by clicking the green plus sign and that's a single column row and let's add a text module and i will add the text faq then i will paste this text like that and let's choose an age four and this one should be in H2. And let's get into the design settings. Text. We will center line everything like that. And the text color should be light. Okay, I have to go to the heading text because I've made some global settings. And I will change the H2 to white. There we go. Close that one and I will just drag and drop the whole row to the top like that looks pretty nice so let's embed a map from google on our dv website and we are going to do it the easy way so you won't have to use a google account or, or add your uh, credit card information or having a google api we're just going to embed it the easy and smooth way and we're going to add some hover effects like this it's in color when i hover and we're going to use this nice overlapping design with the background as well okay so we head back to our development site and let's start by adding a new section by clicking the blue plus and it's a regular one and let's add a single row with a single column so in divi there's a module called the map module and this is actually a pretty nice module you can add several pins and you can have information when you click the location so you can style it in different ways but the problem is that google have made some changes making this kind of hard to work with you have to have a google account you have to add your credit card and if you would have lots of displays you have to pay google some money and uh, even if you fill out these things correctly there's often some trouble so you will see this error sign so i've given up on this a while ago and uh, luckily there's a much more simple way to do it so let's close this one and just delete this map module and click the plus sign to add a code module 
And if you're not a coder, don't worry, I will show you all the steps. It's really easy. So the Divi code module is a really nice feature. You can add simple code and then you can use the Divi style settings from the Divi builder to style it. So it's, it's a really good combination of the good old code and the easy to use visual builder settings. So let's start by going to Google. Oops, not google.com, google.com and so for Google Maps. And when you're at Google Maps, just search for the location that you want to display in your map. Uh, I can say Avicii Arena in Stockholm could be my office. Well, one could always dream. So when you have found your location, you can simply click the share button. And there you have a tab called embed a map. And uh, there you have the code that we need. So click copy HTML. And that's actually it. You don't even have to be logged in to Google to do this. So we go back to our site and we will paste this code in the Divi code module like that. And now you can see that the map is visible and there are no error messages. And we don't even have a Google API key. So it's pretty nice looking, but not as nice looking as I would like it to be. I would like to have it full width. So then I have to dig a little bit in the code here and I can see that Google gave me the width 600 pixels. So let's change that to a hundred pixels. Sorry, a hundred percent instead, making the width dynamic. So now it matches my row width. So I could also change the height. So maybe I would like to have it like 600 oops, pixels high. So there we have it. Okay, looks pretty good. But what if I would like to have it even wider like this? Yeah, that's pretty easy to do too. So I'll just head into the row settings because that's what's limiting the width right now and clicking the cogwheel, going to design and I go to sizing. Now I can set a max width of maybe 1600 pixels and I can set it to width 90%. And suddenly it's wider and it looks really nice. Okay, so the next step is to fix this gray or black and white map on idle and when I hover it it's in color I think this is this is a nice effect and we also have a small shadow effect here so let's fix that I go to the code module settings and uh, let's hit the design tab and we'll start with the hover effect so I go to the filters view and if you check the early chapters in this course you know how to do this so the saturation, I will drop that down to zero and now it's in gray scale. And now I will click the hover icon, the mouse pointer, and I will activate the hover mode. And now we move this one back to 100% on hover, so 100% saturation, and now it's in color. So this is how it looks in idle, grayscale, and this is how it looks in uh, hover mode. Okay, and then we have the box shadow. So I will just browse, uh, scroll up here to box shadow and we can add this one. And now we have a nice box shadow on our map. And we can actually change this box shadow on hover if we want to. So I can just take the box shadow blur strength. I click the hover icon and I increase it to 80 on hover. So now the map will lift a little bit from the surface when I hover it. Perfect. And then we have the last styling trick here, which is this one, the uh, overlapping design, which looks really nice, I think. So there are a few ways to achieve this. The most common one would be to use negative margin. So we could select this row design spacing and then set like a ne negative margin to, to minus 200 pixels. The problem in, is that there could be some overlapping effects and you have to increase this uh, margin or this padding 
uh, to compensate and that could be a little bit tricky to make it look good on all uh, screen sizes. So I will sh show you another trick so you don't have to mess around with this section at all. So we go to the section settings for the map section and click the cogwheel. We go to background and we are actually going to use a gradient for this. So I will add a background gradient. This looks pretty far from this, but soon you will understand where I am heading. So the first color should be the dark gray and the second color should be white like that. Okay, so now I go down and the gradient direction is fine. It's dark to light, 180 degrees from left to right. But I set the starting position to 33% and the end position to 33%. And now you can see that the dark background color stops at one third of the area and then it's white. So this is a really quick and nice trick to make overlapping design that's not really overlapping. It just looks like that and you don't have to mess around with the uh, sections surrounding this one. So last but not least, let's have a brief look on how to mobile optimize this map. And we're going to use the responsive content feature in the DV Builder for that. So I will open the code module. And uh, you remember that we did set the width and height of the map in the uh, iframe code here. So to change this, I can use responsive content. And this is something different from responsive design because in the design tab, I can set different, for example, text sizes or alignment by clicking this one. But in Divi, we have the same setting for the actual content. So this is available in the text module and the image module, etc., etc. So, so you can add a different text or, or a different background image, etc., for different device sizes. So this is really powerful. So in this case I want to have another height in mobile because if we click this responsive content icon and we preview it in phone we can see that the map might be a little bit too high so to change that I'll simply change the HTML code here in the phone view to 400 and now the map is not that high anymore and this could be changed for tablet as well. So maybe I just want it to be 500 pixels high here. And then we have the desktop, which is 600. So this is how you can use responsive content in the code module. It's a really powerful tool and I recommend that you try it out. We are going to use the Divi Theme Builder to create a beautiful template for our blog posts. And this is one example of uh, how it can look. We have the category, the blog post title, publish date dynamically. We have the featured image with a nice overlay and a nice divider shape in the bottom. Then we have the blog post content to the left with text and images and stuff. And to the right we have our global sidebar and if we browse down we'll see related content that is populated dynamically. So let's jump into our development site and we can just have a look how a blog post looks by default in Divi. So it looks okay but not too nice so I think we can do far better than this. So we will add a global template in our theme builder by going to the WordPress dashboard. We go to Divi and the theme builder. And earlier we created a template for a global header and footer. So we'll add a new template for blog posts. So we will assign it to all posts. And now we will add a custom body since the header and footer is already inherited from the earlier global footer and header. So we click add custom body and we will build it from scratch. 
or maybe not really from scratch though, because we are going to recycle some content. If you've seen the earlier chapters of this course, you know that I like to recycle things and save some time. So I'll choose clone existing page. And we will use our news page because we already have the sidebar and the header and some stuff there that we can work on. So I'll start by just deleting this blog post uh, module or sorry the blog module and uh, we'll start by adapting the header and now we are going to work with dynamic content since all posts are different we won't have a static image up here or a static title we will fetch that dynamically from every individual post so let's start here by the um, background image i'll go to the section settings and background and I'll go to the background image and simply delete it. And now I will add a dynamic content by clicking the small icon to the top right corner. And now I say that this area should display the featured image as a background image. And now it's just a dumb image, but this way it will dynamically show this post's featured image as the background image up there. So really simple. Okay, and we want to have the blog title, uh, we want to have the blog post um, category up here. So let's create a new text module that will be filled with dynamic content. So first off, let's add our blog category, blog post category. So I'll click the dynamic content icon. And let's display the post category. And we can have text before and after the category, but that's not needed here. And if you have several categories, you can have a divider between them. And we want to show the taxonomy type or category type categories. So you can also display tags here if you want to. And if you have other custom uh, taxonomies, but we'll go for the categories. And I will actually use, use the this font, which is the H4, the heading 4. So we'll add a little bit of HTML here. We have bracket and H4. And then you see that it's already styled like I, I like our heading 4. And then I will end it by having this closing tag, H4. Nice. And now we want the dynamic heading. So I'll just add, add another text module below this. And uh, I click the dynamic content icon and we'll have the post slash archive title. This will be the title for the post that's displayed here. Okay, let's add some HTML here as well. This should be an H1, a heading one. And we want to close the heading one like that. And now we want this one to be white. So I go to the design tab, heading text. And for the heading one, I want it to be white. Now let's switch order. So this one is above this one. And now we can delete this old template here. Looks pretty good, I think. And actually, if I look at the design here, the category should be on top the post name and then the publish date. So let's rearrange it again. So we put this one on top like that and we'll fix this um, spacing just by a little bit of dragging like that. And now we will add the dynamic publish date here when the post was published. So I click plus and we add another text module and uh, we click the dynamic content icon and we choose publish date there we have it post publish date nice and uh, we really don't need any html in this one we can change the date format if we would like to to something else here but let's keep the default one i go to the design tab text because this is regular text and i want it to be white and i want to have a smaller size maybe 15 maybe even smaller maybe 14 that's good 
let's add some letter spacing and maybe we'll have it in bold so you can just play around with these settings if you like to okay so we're actually going to add some text before our publish date so before it should said say published column and space so there we have it looks pretty neat so let's close this one and uh, let's reduce some space here by just dragging this one up nice okay so we have our heading or our header so let's include this post content because the sidebar is already here so we can keep that as is so to add the post content we will add a new module called post content and now we have kind of a template that we can build here we can say how should the different heading levels look the text the images etc etc and this will style all the blog posts made in gutenberg or, or the classic builder so we'll go to the design tab and uh, we can use this it's very effect effective so the heading one we already have up here so we don't need to use any h1s in the post content so we'll start by post content 2 and the heading font that we will use is cormorant garamond so let's use that one and the sizing there we can reuse what we had in the text module before so 42 pixels for desktop will look nice and I think it was 32 for tablet, maybe. Yes. And for mobile, 26. And let's change the line height to 1.1. Okay. We go on with the post content heading 3. And uh, there we also have the Cormorant Garmond font. But here we want to have it bold. And uh, let's see, 24 pixels for desktop. And for iPad or tablet, we use 22 and 21 for mobile. So that looks pretty nice too, I think. And let's see. We have a smaller font, so we should increase the line height a little bit. So 1.3 is good if you have line breaks in your headings. Good. And you could also add an H4, H5, H6, etc. in the same manner. Then we are going to st style our body, conti, body copy. So that's text. And we use the font Carla. There we go. And uh, let's have 17 as the font size there. And uh, let's do the mobile styling. For mobile, we'll use 16, maybe. Oops, was too slow. 16. And tablet will just keep uh, 17 as on desktop. Okay. And uh, we can keep on designing stuff like the... Um, image if you would like to have all images in blog posts to be for example rounded uh, edges you could just type a value here and all images will be rounded or you can add border width or shadows to all your images in blog posts we can check out a few more options here i would like to have uh, not baby blue links i want them to be golden so let's go back to the text settings we click the link settings here or the link style and it will inherit the font from the regular text but the color of link should be gold so here we can see the preview and this will also of course affect uh, the settings in desktop and tablet and this is a nice classic format in WordPress. It's the block quote. And uh, you can style it here in the DV Builder. So we can change the text color. Nope, sorry. I would like to change the block quote font here or the font weight. I can change the text color if I like to. But I could also change this blue one. That's what I was looking for. Ah, there it is. 
they had hidden it down there. So I can do it like that and maybe we can style it to be italic and maybe a little bit bigger like that and we have a nice block quote. Also you can fix the bullet lists and the numbered lists. So here we have the bullets, so I can uh, actually change this to maybe golden or so, but we keep it as is. But I want to have square uh, instead of disks, like that, so we can be consistent. Yeah, and you can do all the styling that you can do in a regular text module here. So there is one more thing to add in our blog post template, and that's related posts. And this is really easy to achieve with the Divi theme builder. So we head back to the theme builder and let's add a new row below the other one. And it's a one column row. And we'll add the blog module that we used on the home page earlier in this tutorial. And I want to display the latest three posts. And we have the grid design already. If you don't, go to design layout and choose grid. And I only want to display the latest three posts here. Okay, so this is an important setting because this is a smart dynamic feature. So it will never recommend the same post that you are reading right now when you build it like this in the DV theme builder. But you can choose to display recommendations from all your categories. And this is default if you don't click anything here. So that's what's happening right now. But you can also choose current category and that means that you will only display related posts from the category that you are now reading. So if I'm reading a post in the category inspiration, I will only see recommendations from the category inspiration here and vice versa. So it's up to you how you want to organize it. Uh, I don't even have three more than three posts in, in every category, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And we can just have a little bit of a shorter excerpt there, I think, maybe like 120. Looks better. And since we styled this grid before, it looks nice with the shadow and we have a hover effect also that will be visible in front. And we can just make one final uh, change to this row. And that's to make the spacing a little bit more narrow. So I go to the design settings, sizing use custom gather width and we reduce that from three to two. So now it looks good and consistent. Okay, so this is our blog post template. Let's see how it looks in real life. So I save this, exit. And since this was the first time I edited this particular template, I have to click save changes again here. It's a easy thing to forget. So now I click visit site. And let's go to news and let's click one post here. Okay, so we can see that the correct feature image is displayed here. You could see it also here in the list that this is the nice couch with the pillows. And if I click here, that's what's shown in the uh, top area. We have the category case, we have the correct title and the publish date. If we browse down, I can see the content from this post in this nice design with the sidebar. And I can also see related posts and I see it from all categories since that was what I choose. So this is how you create a nice blog post template with the Divi theme builder. The next step is to create another template and now it's for the category pages. So we will dynamically display the category name here in the page title or in the heading. We will display dynamically the posts in this category and we will of course include a nice sidebar. So let's head to our development site and go to Divi and Theme Builder. And in here, we will add a new template. And this template should be um, used on all category pages. So I click this one and create template. And now we should add a custom body. 
and we will build the custom body. And I will recycle some content from our news page. So I click clone existing page. And where do we have our news page? It's here. Okay. So now we will just fine tune some of the settings here and we will have our category template. So first off, let's edit this one in the header. So I remove this. Yeah, we can keep this one, be informed. And let's add a new text module below that one. And this will be our dynamic heading. So we'll just click this, add a dynamic content, and this should be a dynamic post slash archive title. And in this case, it will be the archive title for this uh, category. And let's do some tweaking here. We want it to be in heading two, so I'll use this little classic HTML and let's say news column before the category name and then we will close it with an h2 tag and a little slash in front of it okay we want this one oh no it should be an h1 I'm sorry we don't want to waste precious SEO by using an h2 in the top there we go and uh, we want it to be readable, right? So I'm going here to the design tab, heading one, and I'm making it white. Good. Let's reduce this space here a little bit too. Okay, now it looks good. Uh, okay, so now we just need to tweak this blog feed a little bit or news feed by going into the blog module settings. So I want this to display post for current page. So this is an option that comes up when you're working in the Divi theme builder. So if I activate this for yes, uh, Divi will dynamically know if the user is browsing, for example, the case category, and then only case posts will be displayed. We want to display five posts and then we will have the pagination. So I will simply save this because now we have our sidebar, we have our blog feed. So that's all we need. And uh, I will exit and I will click save changes. And let's preview this in front end. So here we got the news and I can click for example case. And now we see our category page we have news colon and the category name there dynamically displayed and here's one news from a category case there's another and there's another let's have a look how the category page for inspiration looks like so it says news inspiration and there we see only posts in the category inspiration and this could of course be used for how many category pages you want hundreds if so Let's create a template for the search result page in Divi Theme Builder. And since we already created a template for category pages, this will be a quick one because we can recycle some of the design from that template. So just to show you the result that we are looking for, say that I enter a search phrase in the Divi search module. Then this fancy design will appear. We have a dynamic heading or title here, results for, and then you see dynamically the search phrase that the user typed in. And below all the relevant posts are listed that contains this word. So a brief look at how it would look like if we applied no styling. So this is the DV default search result page. So it doesn't look really that nice with no title or no heading or in this kind of boring sidebar so let's fix that by going to the divi theme builder we click divi and theme builder and we're going to add a new template and this time we will apply this template to all search results 
And as I said, we will recycle some of the content in the category template. So I will simply right click the custom body, click copy, and then right click custom body for search results and paste it. So now 90% of the work is done. So let's do some tweaks. So first we can change the heading. And now you can see that it's kind of hard to click this one because it's overlapped. So then we can use the layer view by expanding this menu and clicking the layer icon to the right corner. And we can open all. And now we can see all content on the page. And we can grab the first text module. And let's change this little title to the truth is out there. And then let's change this one. And this should be a dynamic title. But let's delete it and do it from scratch. So we click dynamic content to inject that to our text module. And we want to use the post slash archive title. And that will dynamically display the search phrase. Let's click, click the cogwheel and make this a heading one. So we use the h1 tag. And then we will close the h1 tag like that. Perfect. Close this one and we can close this one. And uh, this is actually all we have to do because this blog module is already set for displaying post for current page. That was the setting for our category page. And that means that this will dynamically display the correct posts. So we'll keep this setting for the search result page and Divi will automatically list the correct pages on a search result. So I close this one, I click save. So let's exit and save changes again here because this was the first time we edited this template. And let's preview it in front end. So I click news and we can search again for maybe sustain. And there we go, we have this nice design. The truth is out there. Results for sustain. And we have two posts containing sustain. You can see that it also searched parts of words. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so that was all for creating a search result template with the Divi theme builder. <laughs>
and we had to head to Divi and theme builder and we will add a new template and this one should be applied to the 404 page so that's in the bottom and let's click add custom body and build custom body I know that some people remove the top uh, header and the footer from the 404 page but I would say that it's more important than ever to keep this to make it easy for your visitors to uh, find uh, the content that they were looking for so we are building from scratch and I will choose a two column layout for this row so we have the text to the left and we'll have the illustration to the right so we start with the text module and we will enter our top heading 404 error and let's move this one to the left and we'll make this a heading 4 now I will add another text module below text and here's the heading 1 oops like that and let's make that a heading one there we go and i actually want this heading one to be a bit bigger than the headings on the rest of the website a bit inspired from lego here it looks kind of nice so to do that we'll head into the design tab heading text and change the heading one settings now it's 68 pixels and i'm going to try something new for this tutorial using viewport width as a font size so I'll say 5VW and this is a dynamic sizing that's rel relative to the width of the user's screen. So if I have a big, big screen, the text will be bigger. And if I have a small screen, the text will be smaller. So if I take this box and drag it out, you will see that the text increased in size. And that's because the area where the page was displayed was bigger. And if I move it up again, you can see that the text uh, decreases in size so this is a nice way to display text uh, relative to the screen size and uh, for tablet we can actually use fixed numbers because there are not such big differences in the tablet screen sizes and let's do the same for phone 60 pixels so slightly bigger than the other headings okay and let's go back to the desktop view and we add another text module and I'll just paste some text here saying I'm sorry for this inconvenience and then we'll add a button module to link to the home page to make it easy for the user go home and we'll link it to home by just making a slash shift 7 like that okay so let's fix the uh, spacing before we do that, I'm actually going to change the gutter width in this row to make it a little bit tighter. So let's go to design, sizing, use custom gutter width and reduce it from 3 to 2, like that. Okay, looks pretty good, but I could still... Oops, it's jumping, jumping, jumping. There we go. Just pull that one up a little bit. Maybe add some extra space before the button. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now we should add our image. And we insert an image module. And there we have our image. So we'll insert it in the right column. And uh, let's add the animation. I want it to slide in from the right. So we go to the design tab, animation, and slide. And uh, let's change the direction to left, like that. And we can reduce the intensity a bit. Like maybe something like that. Yeah, looks nice. Okay, so now I want to align these two columns horizontally. So I want this text and the button to be in the middle here. And there are a couple of ways to do that in Divi. The most easy way 
the approach that I think most people would take is to just drag this one down by adding padding and place it in the middle. The problem with this approach is that it's not responsive. So if I use a smaller screen, let's drag this just to show you how that could look like. You can see that this image becomes smaller and uh, this text is not centered anymore because the padding here is in pixels, which is a fixed value. So uh, this is not an approach that I would recommend. So I will undo this and show you a better way. And we start by going to the row settings by clicking the cogwheel. And we go to design, sizing, and equalize column heights. So this will make both these columns the same height. You won't see any difference right now, but uh, we have one more step. And that is to go to the content tab for the row settings. And we will choose the column that has the least height. So this is the one that we want to align. That's column number one. So let's click the cogwheel for that column. And we'll head to the advanced tab and we'll open the custom CSS. And in the main element, just type margin, colon, auto, and a semicolon. And now you can see that the content is actually centered aligned. This design will be consistent. And if we have a look in mobile, it will be breaking, broken down to um, a responsive design stacked on top of each other. So this won't affect the mobile design. So that's a really easy approach to center aligning content horizontally in Divi. One extremely powerful feature of Divi is that you can easily export and import your layouts to use them between different websites. And this can be applied both to your page layouts, but also to your Divi theme builder templates like the global header and footer, category pages, etc. Let's head to divimundo.com to download the layouts. And all the links are available in the description below this video. So I'll click Divi in English. And in the menu, I will hover resources and I will click download Divi layouts. And I scroll down and there we have the Divi crib complete website. So I'll click download layout. Okay, I'll just click free download. And to access this free download, you just have to subscribe to the Divimundo newsletter and you can un unsubscribe at any time. And I promise there will be no spam or sharing your email address. So you are safe. So I'll type in my email address and press download. Okay, so there are two files to download. It's the page layout. So I click that one and we have the theme builder layouts. So there are two zip files. And uh, I have actually created an empty sandbox website just with a clean Divi installation on it. So you have to have the Divi theme in order to import these layouts. Uh, and I'll go to the WordPress dashboard. And we can start with the Divi theme builder layouts. So let's head to Divi and theme builder. So this is where we can import our global header and footer, category pages, 404 error, etc., etc. So for now, the Divi theme builder is empty. And uh, to the top right, we have this portability icon. It's an arrow down and an arrow up. So if I click this one, I can export my theme builder layout, which is none at the moment. And I can change to the import tab. And this is the one that we are using. So you have a few options here. You can choose to override the default website template, but we don't have anyone now, so it doesn't really matter. We can also allow import to override existing assignments, but we don't have any assignments in the Divi theme builder, so that doesn't matter either. Uh, we can choose to import presets, and that's the presets for fonts and colors and design that were made in the theme builder before. So I would recommend you to, to actually 
uh, click this option to import the presets. But uh, bear in mind that this could mean that if you already have some global presets made, they could be uh, overridden by this setting. You can also download a backup of your existing uh, theme builder layouts before uh, uploading if you want to go back again. But we'll uh, settle for this. So we can't just upload the zip file. We have to extract it. So I'll just click. And uh, we have the finder here. And you can see that was one JSON file in the uh, zip file. So I will simply drag this one and drop it in the file field. And now I will import the Divi Theme Builder templates. And uh, all the images used um, before will also be imported in the media library. So this was pretty quick. We have five Theme Builder layouts. We have uh, the header and footer. We have the category pages, the post design, search results, and the 404 page. So just click Save Changes. And we'll just have a quick preview by clicking Visit Site. And uh, this is how it looks now. We have the global header and the footer and everything else. But now we have the pages. And these are just empty pages by now that I just added before. So we have to fix them. And you also have to go to your uh, menu settings to create your menu objects. So I can just show you briefly how to do that before we import the page design. So if I go back here to my sandbox website, I go to appearance. And I choose menus. And here you have to create your main menu. I can choose that it's my primary menu. I create it and then I choose which pages that should be in the menu. So we did this before in the course, but you have to redo this when you import a layout because this is not done in Divi, this is in WordPress general settings. And I save the menu. And uh, if we refresh the page, the menu looks better. So that's how you can fix that. Okay, so let's import the home page, the news page, the contact us page, etc. So we go back to our WordPress dash dashboard and we go to pages. And we can, for example, import the contact us page. So I'll go there. And these are pages that I created earlier. So they are just empty. So I will extract the all pages.zip. And uh, it contains a folder with four different page layouts. So I must click edit with the DV Builder first to activate the DV Builder. And I will not take the tour. Let's start building instead. And I will choose build from scratch. Okay, so there are two different ways to do this. I could open the bottom menu, the purple circle, and I could click the portability icon down here. And then we can do the same thing as we did in the theme builder. We click import. But we could do it even quicker by opening the finder. And I can just take this file and actually drop it on the page. And I want to replace the existing content. I don't need to download a backup since this is an empty page. And I want to import the presets. So let's import to the Divi Builder. And this will also import all the images and media files to your media library. And there we go. We have the Contact Us page. And now you can just change the text and the images and colors and everything the way you like it. So I click Save. And I'll exit the Visual Builder to preview the page. And there we go. We have our global header, which is sticky. We have the Contact Us page and with all the content. And you can just keep on doing this with the different pages. That's all for importing layouts in Divi. And just to show you briefly how you export your designs and use them on other websites, we can go to the Divi theme builder. 
and you use the same portability mode so you just click this icon and you choose export and then you can name the file my design and i want to uh, export all templates or i can choose which templates to export but this time i want to export all templates in one file and it just takes a few seconds and now they are downloaded and it even removed my spaces in the file name so that's good okay and uh, now you can just import this to any Divi theme builder you want and we do the same thing for a page maybe we can go to the contact page that we just created so we import imported it and now let's export it again so i will enable the visual builder and i will open the menu here in the bottom and i will click the portability icon and i will choose export and we can name it contact us that's fine export div builder layout and there we go we have the json file so that's really simple to both import and export layouts in divi congratulations your website is finally ready but does this mean that your work here is done no this is not the end this is not even the beginning of the end now it's time for you to add and improve both content and features to your website here are a few tips from my post launch checklist so the first thing you need to do is to make sure that your website is visible for search engines and as you can see in the dashboard here it says search engines discouraged so it's pretty popular that when you start building your website you go to settings and reading and here you can turn off search engine visibility because you don't want index uh, google to index your website before it's uh, ready for launch but then it's very easy to forget to uncheck this checkbox and save it so this is a little bit like opening a store but you forget to unlock the doors on the opening day so don't forget to do this in order to not block out google and other search engines another tip is that you can go to divimundo.com you go to resources and plugin and tools and here i list my favorite divi plugins and this is a great way to add extra functionality and features to divi for example one of my favorites is divi supreme pro you double the amount amount of modules with more than 40 extra modules like animated text opening hours floating images carousels icons and all that kind of stuff you also get some extra functionality like pop-ups and in an uh, improved uh, menu for divi so you can just have a quick look at some of the modules so here we have a flipbox looks really nice another divi supreme pro module is this one the divi typing effect the typewriter effect i think it looks really nice and you have lots of options here and as you can see you use the divi builder interface to style this so it's really user friendly another another module is the business hours maybe not that flashy but uh, very useful if you have opening hours on your website and just another example we have the before and after slider so i can just drag this slider here and the same thing for this one you can also of course tweak the overlay and the colors here so this is just four out of plus 40 extra modules that you get with Divi Supreme Pro. So you find an affiliate link in the uh, affiliate link in the description below this video if you want to try out Divi Supreme Pro. Another plugin that I like a lot is Divi Toolbox. It's a good way to fill in the gaps in Divi. So Divi Toolbox uh, adds new functionality for the mobile and desktop menu in Divi. So that's a really big plus. You can also create pop-ups. You can embed modules in other modules. You can add animated preloaders, 
You can change the number of columns in mobile or in tablet. You have more blog layouts, more social media icons, and lots of other stuff. And I especially like the mobile features that you can do a lot of tweaks for mobile with Divi Toolbox. So there's an affiliate link to Divi Toolbox as well in the description below the video or on divimundo.com. Another plugin that I like a lot and use on, on most of my Divi website is Divi Blog Extras. So Divi comes with the Divi Blog module. And um, I think it's a nice module. You have two basic designs. You have the blog grid and you have the full width design. But maybe you want to have more design options. Then Divi Blog Extras is perfect for you. You have more than 10 different layout options. Like box extended, grid extended, block extended, masonry, classic, full width. With, with background, you have sliders, and this is of course fully compatible with the Divi theme builder, and you can use it for custom post types. So just to have a brief look, we have some design examples here, the box extended, the grid extended, the block extended in three versions, and something that I really like with this option is that you can see that they have the same height. And this is something that is kind of hard to achieve with the, the Divi blog module. So this is a really nice improvement. You have the masonry, you have the classic blog with the button, full width, full width with background, etc. etc. So this is a really powerful plugin if you are using the blog feature a lot. The last plugin that I would like to uh, highlight is Diviform DB. And this is a small lightweight plugin and it's really cheap. And it adds functionality to the Diviform module. So by default, the Diviforms can only trigger an email when someone submits a form. And uh, what if your email gets lost or if you want to export all the form submissions to an Excel file? Well, here is where Form DB comes in. So if we take a look here, you can see that once we install this plugin, you get a list of all contact form submissions from the Form module. And then you can view the submission. You can see who sent it, if it's read or unread. You can see which page it was submitted on and on which date. And you can, of course, also export um, all the form submissions from different pages to a CSV file and open it in, for example, Excel or Google Sheets. So this is a lightweight plugin and I have been using it for several, year several years and it's up to date and works really fine. So that makes one of my favorite modules, the DV4 module, even more powerful. Okay, so one last advice, that is to follow the blog on divimundo.com. For example, there are six tips for a better DV mobile menu. And I also have a checklist, 10, 10 things to do after a WordPress website launch, which, which could be relevant, relevant for you right now. So if you don't want to miss anything from the blog, you can browse to the footer of the page and you can sign up for my newsletter. And uh, I will keep you up to date when I add something new to the site. That's all. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, feel free to leave a comment below or even a thumbs up. And uh, I wish you good luck with your WordPress projects in the future. Bye-bye.